and we're live. Yeah, that's it. Hi guys, it's Graham from Airsoft Nation. And I'm Pete from Kronos Airsoft. And we are here at the Midlands Airsoft Fair, at first time in Newark Showgrounds. And my first time here ever. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, it's, it's an awesome site, tons of people here. And uh, we, uh, we thought we'd come along and do a bit of live streaming, a few interviews and things. I believe you've got a, a raffle happening as well. Yeah, we've got a giveaway going on and the entry's still open. So hopefully we can get the pop-up there below. But essentially there's a modified PDW, there's a King Arms Peacemaker revolver. We've got a ghillie suit and a Glock 23 Advance all up for raffle. Uh, free giveaway, you can join it even from home right now. Raffle's open for another hour. But until then, let's talk about what this is. Yeah, uh, basically, it's a massive fair for people to come along and trade their airsoft gear, uh, as well as individual you know, members of the public selling their own secondhand gear, etc., things like that. We've also got quite a few uh, suppliers, manufacturers, and, and retailers here on site as well, showing us new products, uh, deals on various bits and pieces. So it's, it's, a, it's a big affair, and it's a big deal. So uh, if you've never seen it before, it's worth checking out. Yeah, and I'm pretty certain you can see in the background there's plenty of people going up and down now looking at things to buy. We've got some great demonstrations coming up. The GBLS guys are here on the firing range. We've got Attacks, Attack Sense, which is a targeting system who will be coming on live later on to, to demonstrate their system, which is pretty much brand new to Airsoft. We've not seen something like this quite high tech as it is yeah. now. But guys, if it is the first time of knowing what the Midlands Airsoft Fair is, we have a video, so roll the tape. Hey guys, now we're outside, we're going to walk in and have a quick look go. around all the different stands that are available, so follow me. So first thing we see here is... Uh, Caring for Forces, uh, their big stand here, so it's a nice, there's a few charities here today, which is good to see that they're represented as well. But we've got a, a raffle going on for Pilgrim Bandits as well, and one of the prizes you can win is a rather nice Tokyo Marui gas rifle. It's pretty, uh, pretty dope. Moving on, we've got lots of, uh, what should I say, uh, car boot tile type sales going on here, so lots of people with lots of gear as well. Uh, I mean, what, looking at this, we've got, a nice looking sort of DMR setup there. You've got lots of gear and camo, magazines, AKs, MP5s, uh, G3, that's pretty cool. Um, wow, one thing I did want to show you, back onto this stand. How awesome is that? Check it out, it's the new uh, KWA Ronin uh, with a custom paint job with the Division uh, computer game logos and everything on there. That is wicked. I, I'd run that all day long. It's just, it looks awesome. So yeah, very pleased with that. Anyway, we're gonna move on. Yeah, the new, new one. Yeah. yeah, that's the smaller one, is it? That's the smaller, the base. Right, moving on. So, this is us where we're gonna be live streaming from here, or we are live streaming from here. You're watching it now. So uh, that's awesome. What have we got? Uh, ASG, good friends ASG. They're here in force with all their gear as well, which is nice. So plenty to show on there including, we can't get to it right now, but they've also got the new uh, Shadow 2 pistol, which it's, it's a monster. In fact, there's one over there. We're just gonna look at it on someone else's stand quickly. Oh, there it is. It's, it's also, it's really solid pistol. This is brand new out. Uh, it's compatible with their original Shadow magazines, which is nice as well. But it feels solid and it's, it's weighty, but it feels good in the hand. So that's, that's brilliant. Maybe we'll do a review on one of those coming soon. Moving on. OK, let's see if we can fight our way through the crowds here. Plenty of uh, what are these Kydex, Kydex holsters. Those are pretty. In fact, is it the same? It looks like the same guys we saw at the Northern Shooting Show, which is nice to see. Um, so yeah, lots of different options. You can want to come Tropic there, Multicam, Multicam Black and all that. So they're cool. Uh, oh, Alien Pulse Rifle. <laughs> Everyone loves that. Right, we're going to move on, get through these crowds. You can see how busy it is today. To be honest, I wasn't sure how many people were going to turn up, but I'm pleasantly surprised by the turnout. So let's carry on. 
big stand here from Ammo Drop as well. Loads of stuff on display, including uh, they got the 40 mics. Have they got the new master mics? No, not yet. But uh, yeah, lots of bits and pieces on display there. And Olegay, that's good stuff. A few, uh, a few interesting rifles on display. Ooh, shiny red there, entering into the speed softer world. It's getting a bit more fashionable now, having colourful bits on your gun, not just for speed softers as well. Uh, what else have we got? More rifles around there. Lots of bits and pieces. We'll carry on this way. Right. Oh, new prop. Seriously, these guys will turn up to anything. <laughs> anyway, lots going on. They got their own music playing as well. Loads of stuff on display. A lot of this we've seen before, I've no doubt, but uh, there's a few custom painted guns over there which are, are looking quite nice as well. So, something a bit different. Ah, they've also got the new. I don't know if you've seen these or not, but the new grey version of the, uh, the Romeo uh, AK as well. Now, these are surprisingly good out of the box. Um, I've spoken to a couple of guys who, who know their stuff and uh, one of the technicians I know actually bought one of these and hasn't done a thing to it and it performs brilliantly. So, well worth looking at those, so let's move on. <laughs> nice. Lots more second hand stuff here, so yeah. It's so much on, it's so much on offer, I'm, I'm really blown away by it to be honest. Just goes to show how much airsofters spend on gear. <laughs> So we've got Fubar Bundy here as well, representing from Leeds. Oh, we've got a display. Nice. Yeah, loads of stuff. It's all looking very good so far. Uh, I've, I've got us into a bit of a trap here. Let's see if we can get out. There we go. Now, it does carry on a little bit that way as well, but given the amount of crowds that way, we're going to head straight into Hall 2. So there we go. Look at all the optics here, loads of stuff. Ooh. I've never seen a silver one of those before. That's quite interesting. I like that. Who are we looking at? This is Staffordshire Militaria Airsoft and Army Surplus. It's a name I've not come across before, so nice to see new people. Falcon tactical stuff here, loads of Falcon rifles. Uh, they're making a bit of a big splash into Airsoft out of the paintball market, so uh, yeah, they're really going, going quids in on this. Which is excellent. What else have we got? Lots more. Yeah, just, I'm going to say rifles a lot because there's so much stuff on display. Oh, this is the new, the new Nemesis DT4, double barrel M4. Check it out. Now, this is the first time I've actually seen one of these in the flesh, so this is nice. I've seen uh, videos on YouTube, uh, American Airsoft is firing these as well. I think Spartan 117 GW has, um, uh, has plenty of videos on this. He's actually put twin tracers on it and, uh, and used it as a kind of a laser gun, as it were. It's, 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 I'd be interested to see how well it shoots practically. You know, two mag well, so double the change time, you know, if you need to change magazines, but that's really interesting. I like that, and it feels solid, actually, more, more solid than I thought. I was expecting it to be quite plasticky. But no, that's pretty cool, I like that. What else we got? Oh, we got the new Lancer. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to reach over here. <laughs> new Lancer Tactical. We looked briefly at these when we did the Northern Shooting Show as well. We saw a stand, I think it was Fubar Bundy's stand, actually, that showed these. Um, that's a pretty, it's a pretty sweet looking gun right there. And again, you've got your flashy red bits. It's all very trendy. But um, yeah, I, I, I like the look of that a lot more uh, than some other guns of a similar nature. You've got your little cutouts there on the magwell. Yeah, that's really nice. And it, again, feels solid. Feels like it would shoulder pretty well. And it doesn't, uh, it's still a little bit obstructive getting to the fire selector there. But anyway, that's all personal preference. So we don't want to worry about that right now. Let's carry on going. Oh, we've got more charity stuff here, haven't we? Yeah, we've got another, another uh, company supporting charity over there. They've got a bucket on their stand collecting money. Uh, Leicestershire Airsoft. Let's have a look at this one, shall we? Now, you see, I like it when people display pistols like this. So it just looks nuts, doesn't it? And they've got the new ICS XFG. Uh, I'd like to get my hands on that as well, see how well that shoots. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll bring one of those to you and do a review soon. 
but it's a nice sort of compact uh, pistol. So yeah, no, I like that, I like that a lot. Uh, what else have we got here? More guns, more rifles. Let's carry on this way. You can see down there, it looks like we've got some kind of uh, shooting range going on. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. We'll get around to that last. Save the best till last. Oh, here we've got a few more era pieces. That's pretty cool, I like those. More bits and pieces. Again, yeah, there's, there's loads of stuff on offer. I'm really surprised. If you need your camo, you know, there's no shortage. Check it out, we've got Multicam, we've got uh, DPM, it looks like we've got some ATACs in there, some Multicam Trophic, a few, uh, a few lesser known pieces as well, which is quite cool. I've no doubt if you were doing yourself a Russian loadout, you'd be well catered for there. Let's move around this way. Ah, food, most important. And we've also got the Tactical Coffee Company here as well, uh, who are a veteran-owned company, as the flag says, but uh, it's nice to see them representing here as well. Really good coffee. It might blow your head off a bit if you're not careful, but really good coffee. Ah. Ooh, hello. Don't see many of these flying around nowadays. The uh, WA2000, I think that's an Aries product, if I remember rightly. Uh, that's an interesting thing. I don't see many people skirmishing that, probably because it weighs so much. But... And then we're on to patches. Everyone's favourite. Patches, patches, patches. Oh, man. <laughs> Star Wars, anybody? I like the Death Star one, actually. I might get myself one of those later. Loads of stuff going on here. Uh, yeah, they've got more division uh, sort of related patches over there, and umbrella armories, uh, loads of Marvel related ones over there, your Iron Man and your Thor and all that kind of stuff. Let's carry on moving around. Airsoft Wholesale UK, not familiar with them. I've never heard of them before. I don't know if they're relatively new or not, but maybe I'm just ignorant. But they've got a pretty good stand on show here. So, so, Calibre. Never heard of that one before. So yeah, no, lots of stuff on the show. So. Anyway, what I wanted to get to was this. Spin the camera around. How cool is this? We've actually got a, a live fire thing going on here. I say we, I didn't organize it. Live fire, lots of selected targets here that uh, it looks like they'll, they'll light up in the order they want you to shoot them, as it were, and that'll change each time. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really interesting. It seems to be connected to this tablet that's on the stand here, so it must be some kind of app control of some kind. In fact, here we go. That's, what's this? So yeah, I mean, this is just sort of, you know, that sort of hollow foam boardy type stuff. Um, and there'll be a light on in there and it'll, it'll sense when you hit it, I guess. But that looks really interesting. Cool. We might come back to that in a minute and, uh, and actually talk about it properly. <laughs> Thank you. That looks cool. I want to have a go. Oh, action system. Let's get real. Uh, plus, they've got plenty of rifles for you to have a go with as well, which is nice. It's not just a pistol or a rifle. More bits and pieces there. Looks like, again, most of that sort of resale, secondhand stuff. But to be honest, most of the kit looks to be pretty decent quality. There's no real sort of dodgy bits hanging off it kind of stuff, which is nice to see. So, oh, we got uh, Snoopy Snaps there taking our picture. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna risk going this way now. I mean, look at it all. We've got uh, yeah, 416s down there. We've got LMG on the counter there as well. AK variants, loads of rail options, gear. It's just, it's, oh man. If you had the money here, you could just build your entire loadout quite easily, three times over. Oh, here we go. 
beats off anybody. HBA Tap Magazine. So, you know, everyone's catered for, which is good. And you know what? I, I, I kind of knock HBA, but at the same time, I want to give it a go. Because when I have tried other people's rifles, the trigger response is just ridiculous. I'm not so bothered about rate of fire, it's just that trigger response is awesome. Uh, get some bits and pieces, new MTW here. <laughs> I'm guessing, there we go, spins around for you so you can shoot it. <laughs> That's quite funny. I don't know why he's holding the camera, but you know. I said I called it a camera, it's a phone. I'm so ashamed of myself. Uh, lots of uh, flashlights there as well. Wow. Imagine, I'm not even trying to try and pick it up, but imagine trying and sticking that on your rifle. Just push it up there. Bear in mind it's on full at the moment, which is 10,000 lumens, so don't shine anything in the space. Right. Apparently that's on full power at the moment, which is 10,000 lumens. I'm not going to shine it at anybody or the camera, because I'll probably destroy the sensor in the camera. Just point it at the scene and see what happens. Wow. Yeah. That could bring down aeroplanes, I'm sure. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, imagine sticking that on the front of your gun. That would uh, that would intimidate quite a few people, I've no doubt. <laughs> 10,000 lumens. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll put that down. <laughs> That's a lifetime guarantee on those as well. There we go, it's back in. It's safe. Cheers, mate, thank you, buddy. No worries. Right, let's carry on. Uh, oh, die masks there as well, out in force. Uh, you know, we're big fans of die masks, they just work. They're not for everyone's taste, but um, they just don't fog up and they offer you plenty of protection. Now, here's something I'd like to try. Armour Works gas drum bag. Now, um, this looks like it's for, is this a Glock one? Uh, it is Glock 7, right, thank you. Yeah, so that's, that one's for a Glock. Um, just, yeah, it's solid. Oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Look at that. That's so cool. Just imagine that on a Glock 18. You'd, you'd destroy the gun before you finish the magazine, I think. That was brilliant. But yeah, those are, it feels really a lot sturdier again than I expected, but I suppose it has to be given that it's gas. Uh, I'll put that down there, I'm not sure where he got that from. So yeah, that's pretty ace. Uh, and then uh, we've got another stand over here, Longbow, uh, who, they're the guys who have donated uh, a couple of prizes to Graham's raffle, but uh, no doubt we'll have spoken or will speak about that in more detail. Anyway, there you go. That is the Midland Airsoft Fair. Uh, it's heaving. It's, look, it's really good. There's tons of stuff on offer, and I'm really impressed. So there you go, guys. That, uh, it shows the scale of the place, but uh, it really is it's a massive event. Now, before we go any further, we just wanted to have a quick chat about these Travail fitness plates. On Kronos Airsoft, we've shown these before. Uh, this is the first time, Graham, you've seen these. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen these ones. Uh, this, is, this is the first iteration that we've done a review of already, um, which have changed somewhat since, uh, since these were introduced. So these ones, I mean, they're great plates. We gave them a rave review when we, when we tried them out. They've only got a single curve on them, which uh, the guy who made these found that when you actually have it up to your body, there's a bit of a, a rock this way. And now that's been addressed with these <laughs> ones, which I'm going to pass over to Graham. There we go. So yeah, so these ones here, a, a double curve, and these are the, the lightest of the two. Yes. They do come heavier. So, and as you see on, on here there. So again, as you should be able to see there, the double curve there, so they're kind of shot on that. There we go. Now, of course, the benefit of these is the fact that you've got the two curves there, it just fits the body a lot better. Now, it does mean that you, you have to be designated, you see this one's for the front, yes. uh, and there's also a rear one. But uh, again, available in lots of different weights. And we thought we'd bring this one as well, just to show the difference. What do you reckon? Yeah, this one's a significant size up in weight, for sure. Uh, it would definitely cause you to uh, have a little bit more exercise when you're running with this in your plates. I believe the weight of these ones is, I think it's six and six. a half kilograms. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, six and a half. Obviously, you're going to have front and rear. Um, 
Have you tried writing one of these yet? Not yet, but we do have something in the pipeline for, yeah. for testing these, so uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah, I've just brought my VX buckle up system with me today, so I'm going to check these fit, which it looks like they will be in standard sappy plates, but that's definitely going to be one to try. Yeah. I can't imagine myself running with one of these ones all wear, but the, the lighter <laughs> one's more than likely for me. Absolutely. Um, now, uh, we've been, we've got good good contact with uh, Travail Fitness, good relationships with them, and we've actually managed to barter a discount code on Travail Fitness's website. So if you hop on there and you type in Kronos with a K, uh, there's 10% off everything site-wide. So remember, Kronos, so 10% off. It's a, it's a brilliant deal, and you can get some of these, or well, some of these now, for, uh, for a yeah. brilliant price. Nah. I like them. I'm looking forward to seeing the room too, for sure. Yeah, well, we're, uh, we're hoping to do a video in the near future where we do get some people wearing them without knowing what weight they're carrying. <laughs> uh, and we'll get them running around uh, a site somewhere and see how they fare. Yeah. You know. Well, I think we've started seeing a bit more of these coming across to airsoft in the idea of wearing plates. We have, yeah. I mean, it's very much a, a, a fitness thing. You know, guys yeah. going to the gym wearing plate carriers just to have that extra resistance and the extra effort. But um, airsofters have, have quickly realised that they can get that same exercise with the same resistance whilst having fun at the same time. Yeah, and skip the burger at lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Never skip the burger. <laughs> Energy food. <laughs> so yeah, those are fantastic. Um, so yeah, there you go. Travail Fitness, Kronos Airsoft, uh, or Kronos, the code, sorry, for 10% off of those. Yeah. Looking forward to that one. Yeah. So guys, if you are just tuning in right now, we are at the Midland Airsoft Fair in Newark. And uh, as you can see by the background, it is bustling. It is a second-hand sales, essentially like a boot fair. It's the first time they've been here. Yes. Previously, it's been at the jail, and basically they outgrew the venue. It was getting that big. The queues were getting larger and larger. Um, so far, I mean, we've got Matt, who organises this, coming on later on. But I'd say yeah. it's, it's been a pretty successful show. There's a lot of people here. I would think so, yeah. I mean, there was uh, a little bit of speculation over whether or not it was big enough to accommodate everyone at first because I believe last year it was at the jail. Yeah, it was at the jail. Um, that's and it, was, it covered a larger sort of uh, footprint, as it were. Absolutely. So, so more space for people. Plus, they were doing some gameplay there as well, which was nice. Um, but no, it's been a, a, a very pleasant surprise to see that everyone who's come through the doors is able to fit and move around. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. And plus, the, um, the cow shed smell that we were originally experienced when we were walking in has been replaced with airsoft air smell. smell. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we all know what that's like at the end of the day. Um, what's really cool about this venue being it's the first time they've done it here and it was only five pounds to turn up uh, and, and admission mm. there's an actual two more halls after this so we're currently in hall one and two there are another two halls after that so the amount of growth over the next couple of years for something like this yeah absolutely um, and there's a bargain to be had but on top of that obviously we've got retailers here yeah so we've got the likes of ASG who I don't know if you can see the stand behind us there we've got New Prol, we've got Fubar Bundy we've got obviously Ammo Drop uh, big, big stand back there. Um, yeah, loads of them to be honest. More than I know about, <laughs> in fairness. But yeah, loads of people here, loads of retailers. Not just showing off the usual stuff that they've got on the website, but they've actually bought some new things. ASG, for example, have got their new Shadow 2 pistol. Shadow. Yeah, they're going to bring it on. Yeah, they're bring in the Shadow. Uh, um, yeah, it's a nice pistol. I, 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 we saw it in the video that we just played, but it is, uh, it's a beast of a gun. And the um, gear arm, CQR, which I'm hoping they, yes, I'm hoping they will bring on, and I'm hoping we get Will himself to bring it on. Yeah, uh, yeah, and Will's new to the uh, new to ASG, still, uh, still bedding in, isn't he? But he seems to be fitting in very nicely. <laughs> Um, and also the, uh, I think the first guest we've got on, is it JTAC? We've got someone from JTAC coming yeah. on, yeah, who sell the Ronin TK45, yeah. KWA dealers primarily. They've got some fantastic new grenades coming out, which I'm hoping that John should bring on when he comes on in the next few minutes. <laughs> um, until then, guys, make sure throughout the show you can leave your comments. We will actually get them along the bottom here. We'll be able to see the comments throughout the stream uh, and we'll answer the questions the best we can. There we go, look at that. Yeah, Seamless. we have graphics. <laughs> Professional, look at that. <laughs> um, and like I say, if you are watching live right now, there is still a giveaway going on which you can enter. Um, you can go to that website address. Man, I'm working with professionals today. I know, right? <laughs> Considering we only did this for the first time on Thursday, <laughs> testing it out, well, we're doing all right so right, far. That's it, these guys now. Everything goes dead. Uh, you can scan that code with your phone if you take a screenshot of it now, or go to that website address. There's four prizes, £700 worth of prizes up for grabs, which will be happening at 2.45 today. Even if you're not here, we will send the prizes to you. 
Uh, and that's a big thanks there to Sprinter Custom Gilly, Longbow, and King Arms for the prizes. I now, can say the, uh, the King Arms prize is very special. I did like it a lot. Should I? Uh, I will go grab that while we. Uh, yeah, you can I do. I'll quickly grab that over. Let me yeah. put these plates back. So, yeah, this is the, uh, the Peacemaker here, and we should get a close up photo in a minute now. But this is essentially the cowboy gun. Yep. If we can get the close-up camera going. There we go. So this is the Peacemaker, as you can see here, when the autofocus kicks Hold it down in. A bit. <laughs> oh, oh. Is it not going to focus? There we go. There Look we at are. that. We that go. is the, uh, the Peacemaker. We're professional. Eh? Exactly. <laughs> uh, really, really nice, authentic piece by King Arms. Brand new, straight out. Uh, Six-shooter revolver, single shot. Um, I think it's probably the most authentic revolver I've seen out there. I know AFC are producing some nice Schofields. The Schofield is very nice. Yeah, I but uh, oh, man, I'm absolutely in love with this. I'm almost gutted that I got to review it to give it away. It's that nice. Uh, I will say, you've probably got to be pretty ballsy if you're going to use this on the field, right? Yeah, it's not exactly a quick reload, is it? So uh... No. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think there's any way around that. But uh, man, to wheel two of those out as you're going along would be a pretty cool experience. Yeah. And what makes a refreshing change about it is the fact that, if I just may, yeah. it's green gas yes. as opposed to CO2. Yeah. So it's nice that, yeah, it's going to be site legal for the for the most part as opposed to sort of other CO2 powered revolvers which tend to be firing in the what, 400 Four plus <laughs> FPS, you know, the DMR handguns. The but, hit taker revolver at that point. Yeah, it? exactly. But no, it's a really, it's a lovely, we're really well finished, very nice and solid and it's actually it's very comfortable to hold as well. Uh, I was a bit skeptical when I saw that. I know it's yeah. obviously the sort of it traditional. It doesn't look conventionally no. ergonomic, but it weirdly enough fits when you want to. Uh, it does when you yeah. No, it's really good. So that's, yeah. that's, a, so that's yeah. a winnable prize, people. Yeah. So get entering. Join in today. Right. What we'll do is I will uh, go get John from JTAC to come on straight away now. Let me just put this back. In the meantime, what has been the, face, the, the best thing you've seen so far? Oh, blimey. Uh, to be honest, there's so much here to look at. I, I've seen plenty of uh, interesting looking grenades. Uh, I would say the most interesting thing for me has been a target system that we showed, again, we showed it in the video that we saw earlier. It's, um, it's basically plates with sensors in that you can set up on tripods at various distances. They seem to interface what well, appeared to be wirelessly with some kind of app on a tablet or something like that. Uh, and just for improving your, your reaction times and your shooting times and things like that, it seems like a very easy system to get into. So uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's definitely the most interesting uh, thing for me. That and a kind of very tactical looking M14 with uh, paint job and big scope and everything on it. Yeah, but that's just, that's just my, me nerding out on that one. But yeah, if you, you've seen that targeting system in the whole the shooting. The attack sensor. Yeah. yeah. That's it, so that's yeah, it. I spoke to Neil from Attack Sense. It's a fantastic idea. I first saw the video from uh, Gerard Airsoft who showed it off on their YouTube. And yeah. what a cool looking system, the idea of being able to, you know, essentially improve your shooting ability. Yeah. Um, Wim and I had this competition, so you could play. I'm kind of ruining the interview for later here, but uh, <laughs> the fact you could do competitions one on one. And I believe there are rumours of potentially of an event going on where they're going to try and get oh. a few YouTubers in a room and just okay. battle them off against each other. Okay. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll look for the invite. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, we're over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if the peacemaker will make it for me on that one. Yeah, though. no, quite. <laughs> Might need a few more, more about, shots. More about accuracy than time, <laughs> yeah. I think. Well. But, uh, but no, it's, it's a really interesting system. The, the, the nearest thing I've seen to it really is. Um, when we were at the Northern Shooting Show recently, they had the uh, laser ammo yes. booth set up. I don't know if you saw that. Yes. Um, Scott Country. Yeah, that's on the Scott, uh, Scott Country stand. Uh, and it was essentially a projected screen with uh, a sort of mock IPSC range popping up on it, all projected onto there. And then you had a laser on the pistol, which fed back and everything. It was it was good. I, don't get me wrong. I, I did enjoy it. And it was interesting to, to have a go on it. But actually being able to fire BBs and actually use what you're running properly at targets and get that kind of feedback and the timings and everything. Yeah. The only other thing I can think of that's like that is the G and G, you know, the light the, up the, target. The yeah, the uh, the target system, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Which, which are expensive. <laughs> really expensive. Yeah, as I say, this is a feasible option for you to potentially be at home, use it in the garden, or yeah. for sites to invest. I mean you can imagine a site putting that out on the field in the safe zone or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And having uh, events out like that or yeah. just targeting 
uh, and like you say, I like the Scott Country system. Yeah. It's a really cool idea. Uh, you're not firing your gun, you're blank firing yes. uh, or dry firing. And that causes me a little bit of concern. Obviously, mm. how long until something gives up? You're not meant yeah. to typically dry fire most, well, most air supplies. It, it wasn't even dry firing as such. You were, you were merely activating the hammer of the pistol, weren't you? Yeah, it was on a P9. Yeah, if CGP you're on a PNI, PNI yeah. Um, and it doesn't really, I mean, it doesn't really simulate how the gun operates properly because there's no reciprocation of the slide to then cock the hammer back and put the trigger into, you yeah. know, where it needs to be for you to play. So every time you pull the trigger, it kind of it pulled the gun a bit because you had to pull it so far just to pull that hammer back. So, uh, so no, it'd be interesting to, to, I mean, I'd love to have a go on that. I don't know if I'll have time to do it today, but <laughs> it would be awesome to give it a go. I'm sure we might wingle a little bit of time oh, in over there. Yeah, no, no, that yeah. is the aim for sure. Yeah. And um, if you haven't already guessed, we are building time up. We've got John from JTAC coming over any minute now. Yeah. But the event is so busy, he's got, we can, he stands actually just opposite us, and he's got a dozen of people all over there right now yeah. just going through what's actually going through. You can see there on the, uh, <laughs> there on the stage. And maybe we can do a little pan around the room from there. Can we swing around the room? That's it. Follow these guys. They'll be That's embarrassed. It. That's it. We're going to follow these guys. <laughs> <laughs> You cannot escape the, li the live stream. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and we're back. The truth is back now. Uh, thank you so much for that. See, this is great. I need to have a professional crew of it at all times. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to dump this plate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it soon adds up weighing against your legs. It does, yeah. I'm sort of falling <laughs> over slowly as it's weighing against me. All oh, right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, when JTAC do come on, they do have something very special. Uh, I, I was kind of very much nerding over it because I'm a big fan of a certain computer game. Uh, I'm hoping it's that one he's going to bring on. It is, isn't it? He is bringing yeah, that yeah, on, yeah, yes, from, so, from yeah. Overwatch. Yeah. I mean, no watch or is it for Call No, it's from Division. Oh, it's from Division. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. I've seen he's got a few of them and there's oh, one of them. Right, so, okay, fair enough. Uh, I did see there's a nice paint job, but I actually haven't even managed to get yeah, over yeah. there at the moment. In time. fact, he's, he, is he available now? No, Can that's we, not no, him. That's he's not in a red top. Where has he gone? He should be back any minute now. I've lost him. Oh, we do have, uh, oh look, what have we got? Why don't you come on and tell us what you've managed yes. to buy? Come on, sir, hold, hold on. on, let me... Uh, oh, you've got, got the mic. Let, let me turn this on. Well, this is a Cantac copy of a quite classic heli vest that was used in quite the kind of early war of terror and a lot of Middle East security forces, PMCs, contractors. Oh, right, this. okay. So if you want to do a proper PMC, kind of like early 2000, 2010, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely perfect. Oh, very good. We also shoot to SES, SBS. And some of the, some of the USSF as well. Oh, right. So I just found that 30 quid. Excellent. Where, where have you found that then? It's over there on the stall over here. So, excellent bargain. At the oh, second, second hand then? Second hand, yeah. It looks brand new. I don't think it's going to be used. Yeah, no. That, that, I, 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 had, fantastic I was just talking to a guy I know who did some con contracting out in the, in the in sandy places. Yeah. And they were they were issued the, these Pantac vests to, uh, to put their plates in. Is it a genuine one or a copy of it? It's not a Blackhawk. Right. So it's Pantac, which is a kind of mid middle tier decent brand. Right, okay. It's not it's not a not a, not a cosplay brand, but it is a but it is a proper S it's, it's like outdoor, so it's not it's not really an airsoft brand. Yeah. And as I say, my, my friend was saying that he was actually issued this vest by this manufacturer when he was doing security contracting wow. and, and when he was on the boats shooting at Somalis as well. So <laughs> great, fantastic thirty quid. 30 quid, that's an absolute bargain. A bargain at the boot fair, look at that. I shall leave you guys to it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. See you later. So, uh, John has just arrived back, so we're expecting him any minute now. I can see him, which was thankfully about time. He did say, yeah. so, weirdly enough, I said 12.40. He said, yeah, I'll be here. So, he's literally just gone up 12.40 There's only now. so much padding I can do. So, yeah, I'm glad he's, uh, he's going to be available anytime soon. Yeah, the cool thing is, we've also got Kydex Customs coming on any minute now as well. Um, we're just being told. Sorry, technical issues there. We're yeah. just being instructed by the director. <laughs> <laughs> so while, while we're waiting, are there any of the other prizes you've got in your raffle you want to give us a bit more detail about, or you want to keep it all a bit of a surprise? No, no, that's fine. So we've got my four prizes, which again was the modified PDW. Um, I've recently just reviewed this. I would argue, and I know it's going to cause some backlash in the comments, I'd argue it's one of the best AEGs I've ever used out of the box. Right, okay. But, 350 pounds the PDW comes in. The G1 is 380, that's the higher end, the longer rifle version. But I'd argue that was probably the best AG I've ever used. 60 meters, no exaggeration. Uh, a really good rate of fire for what it's coming out with. It's basically fully tuned. And we know Modify for putting together their parts 
really well at these. They've been yeah. the upgrade comp parts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got that, and I was so happy when they said, oh, you can review it, but can you give one away? Um, oh wow, so they actually said, please give one away. Yeah, yeah, they really <laughs> wanted They're like, yeah, give one away. There's uh, Longbow there, Jason from Longbow. Um, the only thing for me with that rifle, and I will say it as a disadvantage, yep. it is not left-hand friendly. So if you're a left-handed winner, uh, you're going to struggle with a sling, that's for sure, because there's right. no attachment on the right-hand side. Ah, right, okay. Um, now, while we've got John coming on, we have Tape here from Kydex Customs. Ah. Fantastic. Look at that, he's running in. Start, yeah, jump in the middle, Tate. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Uh, microphone will be oh, around right here. I'll Look be virtually throwing, shoving this down your throat <laughs> to make sure we can hear you. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. We're all friends here. Yes. So, Tate. Another fair, another, another kind fair. of customs. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, we just saw you at the Northern Shooting Show yeah. just a few weeks ago. That was there. I've got a couple of. Yeah. Oh, I look like a little lobster on it. It's literally. <laughs> I, I'm just, I don't tan, I'm very freckly, and my arms are still a little bit red. I've been absolutely pink, and yeah. it was horrible. But it was funny, it was so hot, and then it rained, and then oh. it was hot again. Yeah. <laughs> the, the week before, I checked, everyone, checked the, um, everyone checked the weather before, and it was like torrential rain, torrential rain. Like, okay, I won't bring sun cream with me. I've got four jackets and everything else like that. But no, I won't bring any sun cream. Second day, within the first hour, I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm burning. I can. I can feel it. I look like I'm burning. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, you were rather red by the end of that day. So, so you knew it was going to rain, but you still didn't bring a gazebo or anything. I had a parasol. Oh, okay. that was about it. <laughs> like a big old umbrella that we just like hammered into the ground. <laughs> Um, it sort of worked. It got so cold the second night. It was um, we were, everything was soaking wet. I went out in the, the morning on the uh, on the second day, and there was just a layer of ice <laughs> over wow. the table, and it was sticking the tablecloth to the uh, to the wow. table. I was just like, and you were right next to the IPSC kind of shooting yeah. competition, yeah. so that must have been interesting for them as well. Yeah, no, it was a bit cold, and yeah, the first day while it was raining, no one shotgun worked, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which was quite amusing, but. Uh, I don't know, everything went well, everything worked out perfectly, and everyone was happy. Excellent, was excellent. So let's talk about Kydex. Oh, that's, yeah, one thing I know about. Um, oh, I see what you have in your hand, there's something secret behind there. So, yes. Um, oh. So for anyone who's not aware what Kydex is and how it can help them in the threat, it's a holster, of, well, it's a, it's a plastic, it's a thermoplastic that you can form to make holsters. It has great kind of elasticity with people in it, it's, I won't get to be too boring with it. It makes holsters. Job done. I'm going to pass that to you. <laughs> and what, I would say, what's really cool with this, and we've got it on camera here, for me, Kydex was essential. I wanted a left hand holster. I wanted a holster with a torch attachment or a silencer or a suppress unit. Anything that's custom. Or I've got a Desert Eagle, and there is no <laughs> way I'm going to get a holster for it. No one does. This man here solves your issue. Um, yeah, send him your pistol, or he's, if he's got the molds ready, and he can. you can pretty much do anything. Most most things. I won't say anything, but most things. Like there's, I mean, I can't get one for my L96 or my SRS. No, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. So how many how many different pistols do you think you've got molds for now, roughly? Um, excluding like the total number of variables with color, left-handed, right-handed, different torches. Is, in, is about seven or eight hundred total combinations. Oh wow! So you even cater for attachments as well, yeah. like lights and lasers and things. Yeah. So lights, lasers, not suppressors because they're a pain in the butt. <laughs> but um, everything kind of everything else within reason is yeah. normally fair game. Um, I think it's something like fifteen different models of pistol, ten different colours, right. left-handed, right-handed, right. four or five different torches, and then there's the custom element of, I mean, can you post it to me? Yes. <laughs> I'll make a holster for you. Right. I mean, I'm making holsters for C96 Mausers, like broom handles, for goodness <laughs> sake. Like, it can be done. It might take a little bit longer, it might be a bit difficult, might be a yeah. bit of a lead time, but there aren't many available C96 holsters, or <laughs> no. MP9 holsters, yeah. or yeah, ridiculous things like that. So, Excellent. I want the PP2K modifiers latest Fast Program, which comes out at the end of the year. Yeah. Well, we may be a kind of yeah. closer, yeah. As long as, as long as there is a demand and as long as people want it. As long as someone done. can send one to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they find a case of Modify, <laughs> sort this guy out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if it's a case of, if there's a, a decent enough demand, which is what, five, six holsters? Yeah. That's enough for me to warrant getting the mould, getting the gun, making everything right, and yeah. checking to the website. If not, custom work is the same price. Yeah, and as we're saying, this is affordable. We're yeah. not talking crazy prices here. We're talking of absolutely yes. affordable holsters. 40, 50 quid, depends what you got, what yeah. you need. Depends how future you're feeling. If you want it wrapped in fry, 
<laughs> it's going to cost a little bit extra. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So what is this for? So, this was that I ran in and pestered Matt until he sold it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sell it yet? Can you sell it yet? Can you sell it yet? It was the first thing I bought. Um, Shadow 2. I'm a huge fan of the SBO one. It's one of my favourite pistols. Uh, and when the Shadow 2 came out, I was like, oh, I, I'll make a holster for it eventually. When the, when the Shadow 1 came out, it was a bit of a slow burner. And for the first kind of six months, no one really bought them. Yeah. No one stopped them. Then everyone realised they're absolutely amazing on CO2, and they fly off the shelves. And then when the Shadow 2 came out, I was like, it might be the same again. I'll just leave it. Obviously, it dropped kind of early this week for yeah. most retailers. And within the first two days, I was like, 15, 20 messages. Do you have a holster? Holsters, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was going to wait a couple of weeks to see how everyone else did, uh, how many it sold. And I was like, okay. The mold has been ordered. Oh. Um, it's been shipped, and it should be with me in the next week or so. Something like wow. that. It depends if customs want it. <laughs> they Good just want customs, to ruin yeah. my life again. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm going to have it in a couple of weeks. Give me a few days to get it sorted, and it'll be, I'm hoping, end of the month. It'll be on the website available for uh, everything like that. All that happy stuff, really. And you've shot the SPO2 already, have you? I haven't shot it yet. Oh, no, I've, I've had the hands on just to uh, go away. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it feels so solid yeah. and yeah. surprisingly heavy. Yes. But not in a bad way. No, it's almost like it's almost like it's made for that. Um, I never had the Shadow One. I've played it with this at the IWA again, not being able to shoot it yet. Yeah. Um, from what I've been told, CO2 only. Don't bother bringing it, no. just get CO2. Um, one thing I would really like, and I know that I've already seen someone already doing it, change the grips to black for me. I'm not, I'm not the fan <laughs> they're not, of the they're blue. Not to everyone's taste. You won't no. like mine. Mine is completely, my SBO one is OD with neon orange <laughs> strips. Like, I got them for like two pounds in a black, um, black Friday sale, and I was like, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's that's horrific. It just looks like a Master Chief pistol. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's. I'm I'm really excited for it, and yeah, coming soon. TM. Fantastic. So for anyone who's interested in a Kydex solution, or even just gauging whether it's possible with whatever rifle, pistol, grenades. Yeah, grenades. Yeah. Facebook message. Send us. Send us a Facebook message. So what's, uh, what's the Facebook page? You know the address. Kydex. Oh, it's, Facebook.com forward slash Kydex Customs UK or the page is just Kydex Customs. Um, it basically um, chuck me a message, I will reply to that quicker than I will reply to emails just because they go straight into my phone whereas I have to load up a computer and then to emails. Yeah. Or if I mean it goes you can there's a contact form on the website yeah. and all that stuff. www.kydexcustomsuk.com and chat me a message, I will normally reply within a day or two, and then try not to phone me uh, at <laughs> 10 o'clock at night, which I had the other day. Someone oh, wow. in the UK, there wasn't even time difference, just phoning me at what they did. It wasn't on a Saturday evening. I need a holster for tomorrow! Yeah, yeah tomorrow, like, oh, yeah. Morning, but yeah. Can you get it for me tomorrow? Yeah. 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 It's my game date. Yeah, my game day tomorrow, I don't want to pay shipping. Can you um, drive it 150 yeah. miles, yeah? Special delivery, free of charge, of course, part of the service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm ordering two, can I have one for yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's good, but you know, be fair. Yeah. Right. I'll give you that take. Thank you so much for coming thank on. You, you, you have a group of people there. There we yes. go, yeah. Oh, um, and thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. We will do. Thank, thank you. Take, appreciate it. There you go. Yeah, I just want to say that again that I'm a big fan of the Kydex Solutions. I've already got um, not only a Kydex holster for my HK45, which has been absolutely essential for me again being a lefty wanting a light on the bottom of there just having that um, solution I know you can get cloth holsters I know there are definitely the guns I ever have official holsters but yeah that wasn't suitable for me and that provided me a way of using the missile the other thing is and I don't know if you've seen these retention uh, clips that you put in your chest rig or your plate carrier L literally just a, a, well, just a little clip yeah. without wanting to simplify it, a bent bit of plastic yeah yeah it's kind yeah. of yeah it sounds so simple yeah. I don't use bungee cords at all anymore. Yeah. I've not lost a single uh, M4 magazine. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is, you can kind of shake it upside down and not lose anything, but it's still so easy to reinsert magazines. Yeah. Um, it's still things like that that I never thought about until I used it on how cool they were. Hmm. So I highly recommend if you are interested in anything like that, go and head up. It's, it's not something I've ever tried Kydex, to be honest, but I've always looked at it and thought it looks, you know, as a holster, it kind of looks bulky. Yeah to look at and I've always kind of thought oh it's just going to get in the way or it's going to poke me in places I don't want to be poked <laughs> um, but 
it, it just the, the the way they fit because they're molded to the exact shape of whatever you're sticking in them. It just stays put. You know, it doesn't fall out, doesn't move anywhere, but it still allows you a nice quick draw on your pistol should you need it, just a sharp tongue and you're there. And uh, I, it's something I'm considering, I must admit. I'll, I'll, I may well look at that in the near future. What, what's your pistol of choice? Uh, Ooh, uh, my, funny enough, I've only, you know, I was going to say I've only got two pistols, but actually I've got, uh, <laughs> I've got three or four now, I think. But my very first pistol was a WE PX4. Okay, yeah. Which I still love. <laughs> I, I went in. You feel I, like you need to defend yeah, it from the start. I do, I do. <laughs> I got it. Because when I first started out, I was very much, oh, I don't want a Glock, I don't want a 911, yeah. everyone's got those, I want something different. And yeah. <laughs> but the PX1, it's been, it's, it's never failed me. Uh, apart from the fact that I, I had to change some hot components because it was, it was veering left slightly, okay. just because the hop arm was slightly wonky. But apart from that, <laughs> um, it's, it's always seemed to work. It's been really good and it's fun to use. And it, it is a bit different because you've got that, that turning barrel yeah. on there, you know, as opposed to a standard sort of dropping barrel. And but it's like. relatively easy to get a holster that fits. Yes. And relatively. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, funny enough, I ended up getting a, a real steel Phobos holster. Ah, okay. Uh, which wasn't expensive. And I was able to get a light bearing one as well, so I can I can have my light on there, and it kind of it comes out the back, and you draw like that instead of up, you know. Yeah. So things are available for it. But now, I've, uh, I've I actually run a TM Glock 17, okay. Gen 3. Um, nothing done to it. It just works. Again, it was that whole kind of, but it's a Glock. Everyone's I was got, a like Glock. You got a Glock. <laughs> yeah. But then I tried it on a, a sort of 50 meter range, the one we use in our videos. Funnily enough, uh, there you are. Um, and it, yeah, it could reach out to a target, a man-sized target, 50 meters away without any problems. And it was like, yeah, I'm sold. Yeah, I'm sold. And I've already got decent kills in, in woodland environments with it when my rifles either, you know, run out of BBs or run out of magazines or whatever, or the powers died. And I switched to the Glock and I've still, been, yeah, still stayed in the game. Yeah. So they just work. Yeah. See, I've been running the Tokyo Mirror Mark 23 for years. I do have one of those as yeah. well, although I've not run it in game yet. Well, I've run it for years. I had the uh, the ASG one. Yeah. Um, it was like Silent Assassin at the time, I think it was called. Uh, then I got a Tokyo Mirui one. I was like, I need something for CQB, but I, I hate the gas sufficiency of some pistols. You know yeah. when you're, you're halfway through and you're running out? So I got recommended a HK45 being lefty. It's lefty, left hand uh, compatible. Yeah. I'm surprised. I got three magazines out of the field. And for me, that was a big surprise for a gas blowback. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's my go-to at this point. And yeah, the big thing for me was like, I just need a holster for it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's done the job. Absolutely. Uh, now, as we've been saying for probably the last 15 minutes at this point, yep. uh, JTEC will be joining us any minute now. He's literally just looking over this direction. Uh, until then, let me just remind you guys, we are at the Midlands Airsoft Fair here in Newark. Uh, hopefully we do have a shot of the audience here and the people behind. We should be able to change cameras. Um, as you there see, you it is a very, very busy event. We are in Hall 1 of 2. And over the course of today, we are going to have interviews with different companies who are here. So we've got JTAC coming on. We do. We've got Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the big issue here is there is currently, I want to say, seven or eight people standing at his booth. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, this is what the, uh, the event will be like. And we've got a camera. There we go. We've got a camera going over right now. Um, but the big thing is with this type of event is we're live. There he is. There he is. We've seen John. That's the man we want to speak to. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's the kind of that's the kind of event this is. Um, that we're at a lot of events. There is a lot of stuff going on. We have hundreds of people who have been here or have been here throughout the time. Yeah. Buying secondhand stuff, looking at the brand oh, new stuff. I think I think he is on his oh, way. There we go. So hopefully we should be able to speak to John, was it? Is yeah, it John, from, John from, from, from JTEC. I should know his name, really. I don't do any research before these things. I just come on and wing it. It's fine. Uh, oh, he's nearly here. He's yeah, nearly he's here. grabbing all the Gucci he stuff. Is. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be worth it. When you right. see what it is, it's I will be move over. It. John, welcome to the live show. Thank you so much for joining us. You're uh, we'll put the microphone in your face. All oh, right. So <laughs> put those on there. For anyone right. who's not aware, what is JTAC? It started off as a company doing bespoke body armour for people, um, and then I moved into generic airsoft as well. Um, but we're doing something a little bit different. There is now. nothing generic about this. No, Look nothing at, at all. <laughs> uh, this was specially done by Chris Hobbs for us, paint job anyway. Uh, we just wanted something a little bit different, and seen as Division Two is the biggest 
well, one of the biggest games at the minute. We thought, why not? And he uh, sprayed it up for us and did a really, really nice job. It looks fantastic. Just the uh, the wear effect on there, yeah, making it look like it has been in battle. He's even took took to the controls and everything and made yeah. it look like just big, like this big yeah. reaction. Yeah, let, let me see if I can get a close up of this. Can we get a close up? Uh, we should have it just coming up right now for you guys. There we so go. tell Look us a little that. bit more about the uh, the gun itself. It's a, it's a non recoil version of the KWA TK45. Right. Um, it comes from, from us. We, 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 we make sure that you can leave with Really nice. Because um, we actually bought the UK legal velocities. Right. Um, this one can run on 11.1 quite happily. So okay. if people want a really fast piece of kit, this will run it. Comes with a 120 round mag. Yep. That seems to go on forever. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice that a mag that size is a decent capacity. Yeah. You know, a lot of other sort of 9 mil uh, style magazines, they, they don't reach 120, do they? And You're looking at sort of 70, 80. They're also rounds, bringing right? an 80 rounder out for those that want oh, to build semi right, level okay. as well. Okay. Um, but they fit beautifully in extended pistol tacos. Yeah. So people struggling for space to have keep them. Yeah. Or um, a single M4 pouch will take three. <laughs> Just like that. Along with yeah. so carry loads of them. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, Giggle Factor is absolutely phenomenal, especially when you get onto <laughs> the recoil version. Yeah. Um, not wanting to big up the product much, because I do. Um, the recoil that the KWAs provide is better than the TM. Right. Okay. Wow, there um, we go, he's yeah. talking words there. Yeah, exactly. fighting words. <laughs> um, when you consider a TM will cost you about 600 quid yeah. to buy. Yeah. This particular model, uh, without the paint job, is 415. Okay. You put a battery in it, feed it BBs, that's it, straight out of the box. Right, okay. So no, no faffing with 500 quid worth of upgrades. Right. The beauty of this model now is that they will actually take, take the... Um, Titan, the Gate Titan, right, okay. The Gate Titan, yep, the version 2, rear wire, just goes straight in. So it's uh, quite So you, could, you really could make this a, a proper beast of a gun. Yeah. I've got a, a guy that I work with in the States, um, we sort of help each other, and he's the dual sector version. <laughs> Not my bag, but somebody wanted it, he built it, and it is absolutely insane. I think it'll empty one of these mags in about three seconds. Yeah, I was going to say, just gone like that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, we've got the recoils as well, um, and one of the UK distributors for KWA now as well, which is really nice. So I can get I get heads up on when all the new stuff's coming in. Yeah. T6 is due in July. And then there's another couple of models coming out by Christmas, hopefully. Oh, wow. Right, okay. Am I right in thinking you were the first guys to get these in? Yeah, we got the first 10 in Europe. Right. And they were sold before they landed in the UK. <laughs> I mean, when I saw this at SHOT Show, yeah. I was like, I want one, they look incredible. Uh, Andy from the Chairsoft Show actually bought one relatively recently, and it's basically become his number one gun at this point. He's like, right, right. I'm not using anything else. I believe Andy actually bought it from us. Oh, did <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's it's the only gun he's going out with now. It's funny, I was just talking to him just a few days ago. He's like, yeah, the other stuff's staying in the bag at the moment. Yeah. I'm just running with this, it's just yeah. too much fun. My, my favourites are the 6-inch M4s. Um, or potentially the, the longer 10 yep. inch version of the TK. Yeah. But absolutely awesome. Where did you get that from? On my shop. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And the other thing we do. I'll take that from you. Yeah, oh, that's handy. Yeah, they're that. Is I'm running now. Inert grenades. Oh, right. Okay. They can't be reloaded. Right. But what we do is we'll laser engrave the trade uh, people team badges. Um, text on it, right? It's okay. clean and PG rated. Do, of course. Um, do you want to show that? Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, we got the commemorative one we did for Red Wings. Let's have a look. We got so there you close go. up camera oh. coming in. It's not my glasses. <laughs> no, no, it's our behind the scenes go. crew oh. not keeping up with us. There we go. There, there you go. go. That's the Hot Red Wings one. Yeah. And what we do is, any that we make commemorative versions like this, we will actually donate ten pounds of the, of the prize to the charity related to that. Oh right, okay. That, uh, place. We've also made some of the pilgrim bandits. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, we do SAS ones, we've got Royal Marines. Come and have a look a bit later as well. Okay. Um, we've made some for True Vale as well, which is another company we're working with. Yep, the plates. Um, and we've sold out of all of their plates that I brought with me, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, yeah, we'll even we'll do one for Airsoft Nation as well, yeah. so we can actually put that up and then see what that looks like at the back of work. Excellent. And what's the retail of these for someone these who's interested? These go for £25. Pounds. £25, pounds. Yeah. fantastic. Yeah, um, really cool. Say £10 pounds of it will go to the SEALs charity, which is about, I think it's about $15 then in the States. Yeah. yeah. Every little helps. Absolutely. It's helping any of the veterans and yeah, everything yeah, yeah. like that. So, I mean, usually you'll find us in in the same area as Terry from Pilgrim Bandits as well. Right, okay. okay. And uh, Darren from Tactical Coffee. We tend to go to the same events. Yeah. Because Terry's um, ex-police, Darren's ex-military. I've had military experience as well, so we like to help the veterans where we can. Yeah, no, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, Fantastic. Well, we will put links to that. And um, as John was just saying, I'm actually going to get one for Airsoftation to put on my live show. So stick tuned over the next week or two when uh, I produce a live show and that will be there because I think it's fantastic and uh, it's a great course. So thanks very much, John. I'll give you that one back. <laughs> That's it, yeah. I'll be coming by later for that one. Oh, yes. <laughs> Cheers, John. Right, thanks thank so you. much. Thank you very much. Guys, definitely check out JTAC, um, especially for any KWA stuff. I mean, it looks absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Absolutely. So you might have a new contender for your best gun out of the box over the modifier. Well, maybe? I mean, yeah. I mean, look, you got to give me one to try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Freebies right. always accepted. Now, we were just talking about charity, and we have a fantastic, fantastic member of the community who has been doing a big job right now doing patches for the RBLI. Tim, do you want to come and welcome to the stream? Hi, Tim. How are you doing? Tim, thanks, thanks for joining us, Tim. So, obviously, over the last kind of four or five months, you've been working on this project, and do you want to go into more detail as to what you're doing? Well, we started it back in January. Um, where Paul Stafford come to me saying, please can you help? Um, he suffers from PTSD. Uh, he's, he's got electric shorts, he's not in the military, which is, it shows you can happen to anyone anywhere. Yeah. Uh, he just said, can I help him raise some funds on awareness for that PTSD? And I said, oh yeah, no problem. I've got a guy to jump in, it's not a possible no. <laughs> uh, so then we started to design some patches for my daughter, so she designed three patches. Um, and then we were sending off the printed and basically a story from there. It took three months to get the design, and now we sell them. And, been seven weeks we've done well. Yeah, I mean, how much have you raised in the last seven weeks? Well, the last seven weeks we did four grand as from the first of June. And um, the goal originally was five grand, right? Five in a year. In the rest of the year. <laughs> so, yeah, we've done wow. really well. So, thank you very much to all that support so far. And 100% of the profits? 100% of the profits, so every penny that goes to it goes towards RBLI. Nothing comes in our pockets. Uh, we're going to go to the end of the year, see how much more we can raise on top of the 5K. Yep. And if you're interested in these and you haven't already seen Tim, or are you not going to the events where you'll see him, I do know there are a few retailers that do have them in store to sell, but also I'll put a link in the description below after the stream where you can contact him to get patches. If I just put them onto the camera just to show off the free patches, and you tell us what inspired these on there. Obviously you've got the left hand patch, uh, which is the first one, which is modern war. So it's all about the, the now when uh, they're going live. Then you've got the blue patch, which is all about uh, PTSD awareness for the World War guys. And then you've got the new and old, so it's a lot of great focus on the game, which is just one. Uh, and then obviously with the RBI like, on top of the top. Yeah. They're really, I mean, they're nicely. Are they, I take it they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're rubberized. Yeah, all PVC. Much. All PVC, that's all. Yeah. Who, who's, do you see these ones? Uh, outdoor tactical dinner for us and outdoor smoking to get them done. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, if no one is interested in getting involved, then how, yeah. how can I get to you? So you can join us on the Pew Pew Airsoft community page. Right. Um, obviously, that's up and running, that's our page, we've done that one. Um, obviously, follow links in other people's groups, they are spreading the word. Um, and that's where the Pew Pew Airsoft community is the main place to find us on there to get the patches. Fantastic. Well, Tim, thanks so much, right. appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for your time. Uh, Thank you very much. Right, cheers, yeah. okay. Cheers. Do you have one of those patches? Yet? I do not, but oh, I will before oh, the end of the day. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, Tim spoke about this a while ago. It's great to see so many kind of charity events and charity causes. Obviously, yeah, uh, we've got Pilgrim Bandits here. We've obviously got the RBLI guys. Even JTAC is doing stuff for charity. Um, you know what? It's weird. I was about to say you're not holding the mic up. I mean, yeah, I know, right? You can hear me, and I'm not <laughs> yeah. using it. It's weird. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic to see more causes. Um, yeah. There's a lot of giving in airsoft for this. 
There is, and I think it's uh, it's nice that there are so many charities. And I'm, without wanting to jump on, you know, I'm not trying to be sexist when I say this, but there don't appear to be as many charities for men, if you like, yeah. especially mental health related yes. charities, simply because there's still very much that stigma. Uh, well, not just in the UK, many other countries as well, that, you know, blokes don't talk about their feelings or something like that. It's all very kind of, yeah. oh no, I'll have a beer, I'll be all right. <laughs> and um, I think it's only recently in the last few years that we're really starting to, to pick up on the fact that it is okay to not be okay and yeah. it's okay to talk and, you know, you can't be fine with absolutely everything that happens to you. I mean, some of these guys who go out to uh, suffer, you know, yeah, they witness horrendous things. Yes. And it's, no matter how much training you have in the army or armed forces or whatever, you can't always be prepared for everything you see and everything you witness. So it's nice that when you do come back, there's a growing number of these kind of charities that are helping cater for, for that and you know, provide support you know, into civilian life and stuff. Yeah. And as Tim was just saying there, you know, PTSD doesn't just impact people in the military, although we always associate PTSD as military, yeah, yeah. it can affect any sort of person who's gone through a traumatic experience. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's great what they're doing, and also a lot of the events in there, so it's great to see as a community um, that we are really trying to raise money for the, the, the charities around them. It's nice, it's not always necessarily the charities that spring to mind, you know. Yeah. We get a lot of help for heroes charities, yeah. but it's nice to see some of the more um, lesser known, lesser shall we say? Known. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to say up and coming charities, but that gives it, <laughs> gives it the wrong kind of connotation. Yeah, almost a bit more niche, a bit more like we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're yeah, trying, yeah, to, yeah. trying to have it out. So, so if, if you are just watching just right now, you've only just tuned in, be aware this is a long stream today. We're trying to go for about three, three and a half hours. Yeah, uh, we are at the Midland Airsoft Fair. As you'll see behind us, there is a lot going on as uh, this is the boot fair as you can see we're starting to cut to lunch now people are starting <laughs> to go to the cafe yeah um, absolutely if you're not aware this is uh, the boot fair in the midlands but this time they're trying to put a bit more show more effect on it obviously we've got this live stream yep two airsoft nation and cronus airsoft but we've also got plenty of retailers here we've got food bar bundy we've got so from tactical we've got ammo drop asg we've got manufacturers <laughs> like asg uh, Falcon are here, and they will be joining us shortly. Yes, yeah, okay. Trent and New Pro are here. Red Van Man is here. I mean, is there any events he doesn't go to at this point? Well, this is true, but he always tells me that he never wants to go on camera. Yeah, I know. Well, funny up, he isn't coming on camera today. Yeah, so yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, we have to chase him at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Just run after him with the camera. I'm sure we'll get him eventually. We'll yeah. wear him out. <laughs> I've tried for many years. Or two. <laughs> uh, one day. Um, and on top of that, we have live demonstrations here. So we've got the guys from GBLS UK here demonstrating the GBLS rifle. Excellent. Have you used one? I have not. You've not used one? No. Wow. You're gonna have to get. So that's you're gonna have to try the. Um, Attack Sense, targeting system, yep. and the GBLS. Yep. Might have to collab, collab both of them into one yeah, experience. Well, absolutely, yeah. Might as well shoot targets with the GBLS. Yeah, That's fine. exactly. Um, yeah, so it's a big, big day here. Uh, this is the first event they've done in this show, okay, in this venue. Is, yep. Previously being the Jow, who essentially they just outgrew. And this is probably another 20 minutes north of uh, where the Jow was previously. So it's not that far out of the way. No, um, no, it, it is central enough to the country I would say yeah. uh, for, for many people to get I mean judging by the turnout you know a lot of people have managed to get here so it's a decent venue and it is huge as well yeah so uh, yeah I mean they not only do uh, things like this but this is just a small portion these two halls are just a, or four halls eventually um, are just a small portion of the entire place so imagine if we keep supporting airsoft if we keep getting retailers and manufacturers and all you guys coming in imagine how big it could get you know yeah I I think in airsoft we need more of this type of event. Yeah. Not necessarily. I mean, it's great to have weekend games. So we've got National Airsoft Festival coming up soon, yes, which I can't true. wait. Will you be there? To be confirmed. To be confirmed. Okay. <laughs> I will be there. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this will be my second time going. And uh, have you ever been to any of them yet? No. No. Okay. No. Uh, yeah. I know it gets a lot of bad rap. But there are still 3,000 people that go near about every year. So it's yeah. clearly not that bad. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I had a thoroughly good time. Um, people always go hit take in, you know that many people. And one experience over a whole weekend. I've had more issues at Milsims, <laughs> and that's saying something. But uh, let's not go into that now. Yeah. So coming up next, in hopefully the next five ten minutes, we're going to have our Farian Airsoft with us. 
you know much about Arthurian? I do not know. Oh, okay. It's, so, it's, I'm standing here and I don't know that. I don't know that. No, I don't no, know because that. they are a brand new brand. <laughs> not many people right, are aware okay. of them. It's the first time they come to an event. Right, okay. Uh, they've only, they've recently got a lot more stalls happening in stock. So it's a new brand. Uh, I only know about because I reviewed it right recently. Right, okay. Uh, so I've kind of got the inside yeah, edge yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, brand new UK brand. They're not manufactured in the UK, but they come here, the QC here, been sent out. So it is a UK brand. They've launched a low, I'm going to say it's another five models. Okay. Some of them will look very familiar right. uh, to other uh, contenders, and it's okay. definitely been causing a little bit of conversation online. But I will say, for the price, you couldn't have been happier with that kind of mid range rifle, looking at £250 to £300 if you want, uh, like the M16 with the um, noob tube underneath, the grenade tube underneath. Yeah, yeah. You want to go for the, the bigger rifles there. Um, but really excited to see more UK brands. Obviously, we've got uh, like the new pros, the ASGs, obviously actually being made in Denmark, but they've got the UK division here. Yeah. It's nice to see an actual UK brand starting. Yeah, we could do with uh, yeah a bit more homegrown stuff happening, certainly. We get little pockets of it here and there. Um, but yeah, just actually coming out and bringing out a decent range of rifles and things like that would be a, a huge boost, I think, to, to the community in general. Yeah. So, and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing those. Yeah, and they've recently just got a few more retailers on board to distribute them, right, which okay. is why you'll probably start seeing the name pop up a few more times now, especially with their newest rifles. The problem with all of this stuff is all stuck in customs, as you uh, as I'm sure you've known in the past, the amount of people that were all the stuff is stuck in customs. Yeah. Um, so they've been a little bit behind the last few months, and now this week, it's like just this week, and yeah, they've been hitting hard with all the companies that now got them in stock. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks we'll start seeing them. Hopefully we'll have Luke from our very next of bringing one or two with him, I'm hoping. Um, I'm still debating what model he'll bring. I'm going, yeah, I, mean, I, I haven't seen them, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw, go out on a limb here and guess that he's gonna bring some kind of M4 variant. <laughs> well, I mean, 99% chance you're not gonna go wrong with that one. <laughs> For sure. Uh, what, what do you feel about this? New companies bringing out an M4 variant. Is it a safe choice? Is it a boring choice? It's they're still popular. That's the yes. issue. People still love using M4s. Um, I mean, if, if one brand I can think of in particular, the uh, Spectre Arms yes. range. Now, the sheer number of different M4s they have in the Spectre range is virtually mind-boggling. Yeah, there's 14 different variations before you start looking at colour schemes. Yeah, right? well, I mean, you've, you've got the core range, you've got the oh, edge range, yeah. you've got the... I'm, uh, I'm thinking just off the edge. Yeah. Oh, right, no, I mean, I'm going across <laughs> all of them. It is a ridiculous number, and in my mind, it can get a bit overkill. Yeah. You know, you are really saturating the market with something that... The only difference is a slightly shorter handguard or something like that, you know. So... Whilst I've no problem, I mean, I've, I've got an M4, I run an M4 sometimes, I've no problems with the platform itself, but I think we need a bit more variation just to get people's imagination going a bit more and, and you know, maybe look at some of the other alternatives. I mean, going back to ASG, for example, they brought out the CZ Bren, yes. which is, it's a fantastic rifle. I should know, I own one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but even if I didn't, I'd say it's a fantastic uh, gun. You know, it works brilliantly out of the box. Um, it's a version 3 gearbox, so it takes loads of different upgrade parts if you need to. I've got a Titan in mine, oh. so it's really nice. Um, but it, it just didn't it didn't sell as well as they hoped, I think. I don't know why, I don't know if people were put off by the shape of it or something, but it just didn't seem to be as popular as it should have been. Well, the brain came out a good year before the Evo, and yeah. it didn't seem to... didn't capture people's no, imagination. Really, yeah, exactly, but it didn't talk about... I don't know if it was like a trend with a game, maybe caught people's attention with the Evo over the brain. No, maybe. It maybe, might have been yeah. more of that, but you're right, I mean... They brought out something that's totally different. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that it either works really well or you get punished and you don't get the sound. That's it. And if it doesn't work, then what are they going to do? Just carry on bringing out M4s <laughs> because they work. So, it's, you know, su it, support your manufacturers. Go for something different. <laughs> it was 10 years before I bought an M4. Really? I started there. So you were an AK like, man. Yeah, I was an AK man. Yeah. <laughs> First ever AK Simon. Still got it to this day. Yeah. It's about 14 years old. Half the metal's falling apart in places, but it still works. But they work. Yeah, it's still works. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like Sima or Sima, however you want to pronounce it, AKs, they're, they're, they're cheap. I'm not going oh, to sugarcoat yeah. it. They're cheap. But there's no, there are no frills. The parts that need to be working properly work properly, and they just, they're just workhorses. They just go. They just yeah. carry on going. Yeah. So, yeah. And again, when I got that, I was like 15, pre-VCRA. I was 15. <laughs> and... Um, 
yeah, like I say, it just worked, it was cheap, it was affordable, and it's just a workhorse. Yeah. Now we do have Luke here. We do have Luke here. <laughs> <laughs> From our fair in Airsoft. Good timing, Luke. <laughs> Sorry, I saw you there, so I thought I'll bring you in right now. Welcome right. to the stream. Hello. Hello there. Hello. I will, I will be shoving this down your throat, but don't take oh, it. Okay, no, that's fine. At least you asked me first. That's well, tell me to take that one. Yeah, so, say hello to my little friend. Chris. Yeah, I was just talking about this. I was like, I hope they bring this. I mean, come on. Look <laughs> at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and when we first spoke about Alferian, this yeah. was one of the ones I was like, please tell me you're going to bring this out. <laughs> well, this is, I mean, out of the five new models we've released, this is another one, this, uh, this is what here, this sandstone. This is one of the popular ones. Um, we are going to release an upgrade kit for this as well, where you can change the upper receiver to make this an A2 rather than an A3. <laughs> so for those guys who want to do Vietnam, yeah. that's going to be right this week. So tell us a little bit about Alferian. Yeah, so Alferian Airsoft was came to fruition about 12 months ago. We brought six rifles into the UK. Uh, we tested them extensively with a range of players. So those players were intermediate, new players, guys who've been playing for a long time. We then took them back to the workshop after that and said, actually, this is a bit wobbly, this doesn't really work, we want to change this. We then pushed them back to the manufacturer, collated loads of parts into one factory, and then produced what you see now. Um, these rifles are QC'd in the factory, then they come to us in the UK. We QC everything here in the UK. Um, and we chrono everything as well, so each one of these guns will be supplied with a chrono sheet, uh, which will give you the average of your 10 shots when it comes to us. Everything's under 350. Um, and they all feature a quick change spring system as well, where you can remove the button tube, you can take a knurled nut from the back of the receiver, and that goes straight through into the gear, so you don't have to take the gear because that's the receiver. Yeah. So that's a feature on all of our Sorry, I'm moving my head a lot. No, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> it it so should back, pick it up. Back, I, back, as, back. as Luke was just saying, though, these are chronoed before they get to you. So as much as it is a quick spring change, you shouldn't need it. In theory, yeah, yeah. that's right. But, I mean, you know, if people want to then do their own tech-in, yeah. you can release a lot of the spring tension before you get in there and you don't have a box full of gears that are ready to fly everywhere or wherever you're going to So that's another feature. But, um, <laughs> so we've just released, well, released five models initially. Um, so they were a Mark 18, a Recon, which is integrally suppressed, a Knight, which has got some flip-up force lights and a low-profile gas bomb, and also a Veteran, which is kind of a baby cover to this model. Yep. Uh, which is an M16A1 uh, with a Tobler and Shake Vanguard. Yep. Um, and then the next five models we brought out are this, which is the Crusader, uh, this rifle, which is called a Mordred. Um, so I've got two different models of this. This is a Sandstone, and then we have another model, which is an Obsidian. Uh, comes with a QD suppressor and all the rail sections for the M lock. Um, and then we've also brought out two smaller rifles, which are called Offspring. Uh, which have got like a, an aggressive looking front end. One's red called Crimson, and one's black called the Mid. Is that yeah. the ones that have got the sort of panther looking? That's sort of, right, yeah. Like, so yeah I've it's, seen it's called the offspring because it's meant to be related to the Glatizan. So the Glatizan had these things come out of it which were its offspring and they ate the Glatizan alive. Nice. So, yeah. yeah. That's family why we named family it that. friendly fun here <laughs> yeah. on uh, so all, all sticking with the, you know, the Arthurian theme. Um, and just going back to this particular model, we, we kept the engravings quite light. So that if guys do want to do the Vietnam impressions, they've not got a you know a big laser engraving that's cut away. Yeah. Uh, so they can just spray over it and camo it out to whatever they need. Um, all of the rifles feature enhanced gear sets, enhanced tackle plates, enhanced nozzles, low resistance wiring, and trigger blocks. Um, they all feature lock-in dust covers, so you don't have to have seven hands to adjust the lock. <laughs> and you can release the dust cover using the bolt catch. Um, and they all feature the ENC spring change system, the exchange of chrono system, apart from the younger brother of this, which is the better. That is a soft change, so you do need to take the gift. And the crazy thing about this is the affordability. Yep. So these are all at a max price of 250 yep. apart from these premium models, so this and the two Mordreds, which are at 300 which is not bad at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come getting. on. Yeah. I mean, you're getting a fully built M16 <laughs> into a three combat for 300 quid. So yeah, absolutely. We're, we're targeting this at the kind of late beginners, early yes. intermediate type. That's, that's kind of where we are. Um, plans for our period in the future, we're going to be releasing a range of AKs. We're going to be releasing a something called the Relic range, which will be some older style rifles, so Stens, Sterlings, that sort of thing. Right. And then we will be bringing out something called the Merlin's Workshop series, which will be electronic trigger units for MOSFETs program. Oh, so, yeah. custom work and all that. Oh, right, right, okay. That's what the future holds. Wow. That's about 18 to 24 months out, so <laughs> don't get excited too yet. If customs are happy with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, well, I, as I said, I've reviewed one of these. Uh, I couldn't have been happier. I like to say, for, for what you're paying, 
this is perfect for that intermediate player that just wants to get something that works outside the box. Yeah. It's ready to go. Um, and if you want a 40 mic or a master mic, this is definitely <laughs> the rifle for you. We've, we've tested this already. This works with tags, master mic, 40 mics, master mic. Tags shells. as well. Yeah, ah, it works around that's, so, good. that's good. I don't know if you've got another hand. If I take that, if you take this that. is actually not as heavy as you'd almost expect. Okay, I mean, yeah, because you've got the grenade launcher on there. You do expect it to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I feel like you'd yeah. want to do that if you had it on the other well, <laughs> But no, I mean, it does It does feel pretty well balanced. Well balanced. Be honest, all of yeah. the series are all metal upper and lower receivers, so you're getting metal bodied rifles, metal barrels. Yeah. yeah. No, that is really nice. And there's no there's no real flex in it at all or anything. It's just... Yeah, it just feels really nice. Didn't want to go for a rotary style hot unit then? Or is uh, it, is it, uh, we toyed with it. That will probably be something that comes along with the later models. So, right, uh, okay. you know, we could offer that as either a, a, an upgrade afterwards. So we're looking at doing a range of parts. Yeah, yeah. So you can buy a few drop-in bits and pieces. Um, but that may be something that comes along with the later models or rifles. Yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, I can understand if at the price, price point you're aiming at, there are maybe, I'm not going to say corners cut, but no. occasional compromises. But to be honest, the, the gear type hop ups units, they work. They're the first type that came out, yeah. you know, they still work fine. Yeah. That's, uh, that's kind of what we, you know, we, we toyed with a few rotary hop units, but we couldn't find one that really held its position well. Yeah. So we kind of thought, if it's not broken, then let's not fix it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I really, that's impressive. I mean, it's possibly a bit long for my tastes, but uh, if you're looking for that kind of. See, that is, that's my taste. Is it? Yeah, I'm right, not okay. doing the short guns. Um, like the PDW earlier, I was like, no, I want the G1. I want the longest version possible. It's only because I get tired quickly. If I'm running <laughs> something like this, by by two hours in, I'll be. It's because <sighs> you've got your Travis fit, your travel Oh, yeah, yeah I've got the Travel plates in as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, but, uh, no, I really like that. It's very, very nice. Well, look, thank sure. you so much for coming on. No and, um, I've got seven dealers in the UK, so oh, people yes. want to know where to find these. These are only with seven exclusive dealers. So if they log on to our player in airsoft.com, they can find these all over the country. Yeah, I thought you were going to name them then and I was going to put you on the spot, but no. I hope that's a perfect way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Luke, thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. See you later. See you later. See you later. See you later. Thanks, mate. Um, so that's the first time you got to have a look at them? Yeah, no, I was impressed, I've got to be honest. It, it felt really solid and really sturdy. And like I say, it was, given the length of it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't no. sort of tipping over fours, it wasn't front heavy. Um, so if you're into that kind of, uh, if you're into that size of rifle, like I say, it's a little bit long for my taste <laughs> because I'm a weakling. Um, I, prefer, I prefer running something a little bit shorter so I can last longer. Um, but no, it's, it's, the quality wise, it's just, it's there, isn't it? It really yeah. is. I, like I say, it's never, it's not, without downplay, it's not going to be the best gun ever, ever, ever. No. But you're not paying for the best gun ever. You know, no. you're paying for something that's going to be a brilliant performer out of the box. Yeah. I was with, with the one I had at the time, hit 50 meters easy. Uh, I will be honest, it was a rather windy day. Um, but it, it, it flew true, straight, as to what you'd expect out of the box. Yeah. And, you know, if the quality is as good as these guys are saying, obviously, from a review point of view, you only get a couple of games. I think I had it for about four or five games. Um, the long-term effect, you never know. But if it's as good as it felt after those five games, I'd be really confident to, to run with that all the time round. Fantastic. And yeah, uh, yeah I don't think you're too wrong at that price point. No, not at all. Um, I know a lot of people who will buy a gun that price and then spend another 500 quid uh, you know, change think on the upgrades they think they need yes. to make it amazing and shoot 150 meters and whatnot. <laughs> but, you know, such a thing doesn't exist, by the way. 150 <laughs> meters out of an airsoft gun. No. Um, but yeah, if it, I, I, what are your thoughts on upgrades in general? Is it, do you like to get hold of a gun and instantly get into it and tinker around with it? And... I don't, and I have, I don't upgrade, I very rarely upgrade my AEGs beyond maybe changing the barrel over time, and right. it is time. It's, it, every rifle I've had outside the box, I've had my Tickman now AEG, yep. their beginner brain, the rate, I've not touched anything on there. It's right. like, it works, it fires straight, there's nothing changing there. Sniper rifles, because I've got I'm into sniper rifles. I get the idea of people wanting to change things. I still think you should, if you've never been the sniper role, play with it stock. Yeah. Because if you can't get into the gameplay and the, the, the way of the, the game's different when you're sniping, you know. Yeah. Well, um, a lot of people think, that, you know, they they start to hate the gameplay or the style of sniping because oh, you never hit anything. My rifle's rubbish. Well, maybe it's not the rifle. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. it. Think about that. Yeah, I, I used my stock either MB06, which is the urban sniper. Yep. Had that for, I would say, probably four, five months stock. And don't get me wrong, it's a harder game when it's stock. 
but you learn a lot more about the stealth concealment, you know, yeah. just learning to use the rifle comfortably before you start looking at doing crazy upgrades. Yeah. When you got upgrades, it's way more fun, but it, you're not getting that much of an advantage. No. I, I think that's the big thing that people forget. No, that's um, it. I'm, I'm, my motto is always, if it ain't broke, don't yeah. try to fix it. You know, play with it for a while out of the box. If you really feel that it's not performing up to the standard that you would like, either you chose the wrong gun in the first place, or you know, if it, if it's nearly there, then maybe start looking at upgrades. Maybe swap it out for a, you know, tight ball barrel, or look at maybe a different hot rubber if you think it's not quite. I would say choice. I had to change. That's one thing I've yeah. had to change on a few rifles in the past. A hot rubber out the box. I was yeah. like, this isn't firing right. I open it up, and you see it's been either cold and snapped, or just been put together in a bit yeah. of a, a quicker job and torn. Um, just the slightest tear. Yeah. Tiny. It doesn't matter how small it is on a hot rubber. That can really make your BBs fly anyway. Yeah. And I think it's a bit of a telltale when you fire it. You go, okay, this is just not right out of the box. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, beyond that, I don't change a lot on mine. No, no likewise. I mean, granted, I've, I've got the Titan in the Bren, but that's only because I managed to get the Bren at a half price because it was the pre uh, MOSFETed version. Oh, that they okay. Did. Um, so yeah, I got the I got the gun at half price. I thought, well, I've got a little bit of extra money. <laughs> what can I do? Let's stick the Titan in it. And I'll be honest, I am happy that I did because with that pre-cocking uh, and the ability to run 11 ones and everything it's just oh, it's so snappy i love it i really do love it yeah i mean you've used the specter arms i've got the aster in there haven't you uh yeah well we did a review recently on the uh, on the edge 11 uh, h14 the specter arms edge 14 which has a very basic mosfet in the back of it um the titan xasr i think it is okay um, XASR, that's yeah it. and it's you know all it's doing is uh, you know, controlling the amount of power that's going from the battery to the motor, making sure that trigger response is, is nice and crisp. And it does do a really good job. Yeah. The gun itself is pretty standard. Yes. There's no other sort of big uh, frills going on in the no. gearbox. I mean, it's, it's their Orion gearbox, if I remember right. Yeah, it's, it's, Orion, got, yeah. it's got a few sort of, you know, the bits that need to be high quality are high quality. Um, but it just works really, really well. Uh, again, out of the out box. Of box yeah. And you get the two high cap mag, uh, two mid cap magazines. Mids. Uh, the really nice PMAG style yes. magazines as well. Um, and you get a foregrip with it as well. And I think that's all the Edge models come with a, a foregrip. I think most of the Edge models come with a foregrip. Um, so yeah, it's just, they, yeah, they're great. I don't know if it's just you, uh, just me, but have you noticed more of these rifles now are coming out with higher mid caps than high caps? I, I still think oh, yeah. the, the cheaper models are just going high yeah. cap nice and easy. But I've started noticing anything like. 180 pound upwards, 200 pound upwards. It's mid caps. I've noticed it a bit more with the G and Gs. Uh, they're they're more recent. I think that's more to do with the fact that they've got their new uh, ETU2 system in there that's got the auto stop feature and, yes. and stuff like that. So they've had to redesign the magazine. Um, a lot of those that come with that are now mid caps as opposed to high caps, I believe. Um, but that, like I say, that might just be due to a manufacturing <laughs> necessity. I don't know. But yeah, I, I know what you're saying. It's not as not as many as I'd like. Because no. I mean, I'm, always, I'm a mid cap all the way yes. kind of guy. I, you know, high cap in an emergency, but I'll, I'll always run mid cap. There's always that one high cap just in case yeah, things just go really bad. In, in a pocket yeah. somewhere, just in case you're throwing other doesn't magazines. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many magazines do you normally run? Then? I run five four on my chest, one in the gun. Yeah, you see, I, I've been known to run with 10 uh, mid caps. So I run 10 on Milsims when they're 60 round mags. Right. Uh, and that when I do that, I'll wear my webbing rig yeah, around yeah. the waist, so it's nice and easy to compact them. Yeah. But yeah, on a game day, four in the chest rig, one in the gun. Um, no dump outs, so you're swapping in and out all day long. Yeah. Um, you see, I'm still working on my loadout because I've got like, I've got a, a mock JPC carrier and a battle belt as well, and I've got sort of six magazines here, uh, two magazines here. Uh, two magazines here, one around the back for an emergency. <laughs> and I find myself at times kind of thinking, oh, no, magazine. Uh, I feel like uh, you watched the Garand no. Fun video on loadouts and went, I'll oh, half do it <laughs> and I'll fix the rest later on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm still still working on that. I mean, to be honest, I've been looking at the new um, the Viper VX uh, system. Why just you, just a little Just the utility rig on the chest, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got... Which hopefully we've got... Oh, here we go. We're going to bring uh, Funny enough, I literally bought this because I wanted to test if the uh, the plates would fit. But I've got their, oh, right, okay. their buckle-up VX rig. Yeah. Uh, so I've actually got the chest rig to go with this as well. Yes. Um, I'm a big fan of Viper. I know they get a lot of hard rap from people, but I think they've gone leaps and bounds in the, in the last few years. Yeah, I mean, there was a, there was a, some manufacturing issues with some of the early stuff they bought out. Some of the stitching wasn't quite yeah. uh, up to scratch. But they, like you say, they have improved and improved and improved. Yeah. And the um, the new VX range with the buckle-up system and the interchangeability of it all is, is a brilliant system. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think they've done really good. I mean, with the VX stuff, even the, the buckles now have got the same pattern VCAM. 
But yeah, you can see here, you just rip the Velcro off and put the chest rig straight on there or any of your pouches straight on. Um, and the lovely thing about that is you can have different loadout types on different panels. So I'm, I'm running as an M4 guy today. I've got my M4 type panel on the front here. Oh wait, I'm going to change to sniping. Rip that off, put your sniper one on and away you go. Yeah. It's just so uh, adjustable and customizable. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, well, for, for the last three years, I've only run chest rigs. Or oh, webbing right. for Milsims. Oh no, no, every skirmish I only run a chest yeah. rig. So whether it was Spec Ops, Viper Spec Ops one, which I've ran now probably for the last 18 months near about exclusively. Um, now obviously they've got their new one, which is very spiritual, spiritual yes. yeah. kind of inspired, yeah, yeah, if yeah. we should say that. Well, that's the one I like, I must admit, because yes. it's very minimalist. You've got yeah. room in there for, uh, it's kind of got three mags, three mags, and you've got an extra pouch on the front, which could take another three yeah, mags if you wanted yeah. to. Uh, or it can carry your, your bangs in there or something. Or pistol um, mags or any, any, you yeah, yeah, any, any inserts. Yeah, even, a, even a holster sort of yep. insert for it as well, isn't there, I think. Um, and they've got a drop pouch as well, so if you want to carry your... Um, uh, extra BBs or anything like that, everything you want in there. And and it's dang very the dangler comfortable. even goes on. The dangler, that's the one I was looking for, yeah. Um, and it's just, it's very, it's minimalist, it's lightweight. And for me, I think that's uh, that's ideal because I run hot. I don't know about you, but I run hot when I'm playing airsoft. Uh, and I, I get very warm very quickly. So wearing a, a JPC or any kind of plate carrier all the time it just starts to get really uncomfortable so where if you've got this little chest rig instead it only takes off about that kind of portion there yeah. and then you've got a few straps around nothing on your back at all and it's just really comfortable really lightweight um, yeah I mean this is why I've said for a long time I've been a big advocate of like I get plate carriers look cool yeah and almost unnecessary unless beyond looking the part in terms of airs we're not taking hits here yeah um, in terms of billets you don't need the plates yeah. it's just more of a cosmetic thing whereas with a chest rig it's designed for function like a lot of us but maybe not in the best health condition <laughs> not wearing so much heavy stuff means I after the afternoon you're not ratty and tired yeah, yeah, yeah. I, today i've not spent so much time ever before holding my gut in as i have <laughs> on this live stream yeah uh, i mean that, that the, the kind of thing for me is like being able to go all day no issues you're not over encumbersome so that like say after lunchtime when you start seeing some players either tired or yeah. dehydrated you're carrying so much stuff yeah whereas with a chest rig um i've reviewed the spec ops one the helicomex helicon tech rig. i don't know if yeah, you yeah. tried that i know of it yeah, yeah. You, i mean it, it's almost a chest rig with a dangler which could have a backpack on so it gives you a lot of flexibility yeah i'd almost go it's one step more than a chest rig with the amount you can take on there yeah but it is a good option yeah uh, again running 24-hour milsims with that is it's actually fine and especially any of you guys who have problems with your eye pro fogging up yes it, chances are it's because you're too hot you're wearing too much gear yes. and that's what happens to me which is what's brought me around to looking at this viper bx stuff yeah so uh, just just consider that in the future you know if you're if you're starting to fog up really quickly it's because you're too hot if you've got too much stuff on you it's bound to happen you're gonna have to stop in the bush somewhere and start sort of wafting your eye pro to get rid of that fog which is something else i've done as well but uh yeah have a look at the viper bx stuff it's really really good uh and a very affordable price as well plus an extra added bonus of the VX stuff is the rifle bag that they produce has a couple of patches on the front of the bag that you can mount two of these front yes. panels onto it so again if you're carrying two different types of loadouts with you they're just there on the rifle bag so you can have a sniper rifle and, a, and an M4 or an AK in your bag yep. and you've got the corresponding uh, sort of front panel of your of your chest carry or your chest rig there ready to go so yeah. it's really worth looking at I saw that uh, their new bag at IWA yeah said I really like it I'm looking to maybe change one I've still got my Viper bag from 2005 right the zip still work and I'm still going to justify like do I need another bag this one still works <laughs> but I feel like I've kind of done its use it's over 10 years old right um it's like well maybe i should uh, doesn't owe you anything then no it, that's really? it yeah. yeah it's been on the, i ride on a motorcycle to these sites so it's been right, on the okay. back in all weathers uh <laughs> so yeah i'm looking at that as a, a new update and a change because like i say there's a lot of flexibility on there yeah i'm sure absolutely now, now guys if you're not aware we are at the midland airsoft fair and we're actually going to cut across to the video just of us walking around them and we'll be back in three minutes Hey guys, now we're outside, we're going to walk in and have a brief look around all the different stands that are available, so follow me. Okay. 
So first thing we see here is uh, caring for forces. Uh, they're big stand here, so there's a nice. There's a few charities here today, which is good to see that they're represented as well. But we've got a, a raffle going on for Pilgrim Bandits as well, and one of the prizes you can win is a rather nice Tokyo Marui gas rifle. It's pretty, uh, pretty dope. Moving on, we've got lots of. Uh, what should I say? Uh, car boot tile type sales going on here, so lots of people with lots of gear as well. Uh, I mean, what, looking at this, we've got a nice looking sort of DMR setup there. You've got lots of gear and camo, magazines, AKs, MP5s, uh, G3, that's pretty cool. Um, wow, one thing I did want to show you, back onto this stand. Second <laughs> How awesome is that? Check it out. It's the new uh, KWA Ronin uh, with a custom paint job with the Division uh, computer game logos and everything on there. It's wicked. I, I'd run that all day long. It's just, it looks awesome. So yeah, very pleased with that. Anyway, we're going to move on. That's the smaller one, is it? That's the smaller, the base. Right, moving on. So. This is us, where we're going to be live streaming from here, or we are live streaming from here, you're watching it now. So uh, that's awesome. What have we got? Uh, ASG, good friends ASG, they're here in force with all their gear as well, which is nice. So plenty to show on there, including, we can't get to it right now, but they've also got the new uh, Shadow 2 pistol, which it's, it's a monster. In fact, there's one over there. We're just going to look at it on someone else's stand quickly. Ah, there it is. It's, it's also it's really solid pistol. This is brand new out. Uh, it's compatible with their original Shadow magazines, which is nice as well. But it feels solid and it's it's weighty, but it feels good in the hand. But that's that's brilliant. Maybe we'll do a review on one of those coming soon. Moving on. Okay, let's we'll see if we can fight our way through the crowds here. Plenty of uh, what are these Kydex? Kydex holsters. Those are pretty. In fact, is it the same? It looks like the same guys we saw at the Northern Shooting Show, which is nice to see. Um, so yeah, lots of different options. You can multicam Tropic there, multicam, multicam Black, and all that. So they're cool. Uh, oh, Alien Pulse Rifle. <laughs> Everyone loves that. Right, we're going to move on, get through these crowds. You can see how busy it is today. To be honest, I wasn't sure how many people were going to turn up, but I'm pleasantly surprised by the turnout. So let's carry on. <laughs> Big stand here from Ammo Drop as well. Loads of stuff on display, including uh, they got the 40 mics. They got the new master mics? No, not yet. But uh, yeah, lots of bits and pieces on display there. And Olegay, that's good stuff. A few, uh, few interesting rifles on display. Ooh. Shiny red there, entering into the speed soft world. It's getting a bit more fashionable now, having colourful bits on your gun, not just for speed softers as well. Uh, what else have we got? More rifles around there. Lots of bits and pieces. We'll carry on this way. Right. Oh, new prop. Seriously, these guys will turn up to anything. <laughs> anyway, lots going on. They've got their own music playing as well. Loads of stuff on display. A lot of this we've seen before, I've no doubt, but uh, there's a few custom painted guns over there which are looking quite nice as well. So, something a bit different. Ah, oh, they've also got the new. I don't know if you've seen these or not, but the new grey version of the, uh, the Romeo. Uh, AK as well. Now these are surprisingly good out of the box. Um, I've spoken to a couple of guys who, who know their stuff and uh, one of the technicians I know actually bought one of these and hasn't done a thing to it and it performs brilliantly. So well worth looking at those. So let's move on. <laughs> nice. Lots more second-hand stuff here, so yeah, it's, it's so much on. It's so much on offer. I'm I'm really blown away by it, to be honest. Just goes to show how much airsoft is spend on gear. <laughs> well, so we got Fubar Bundy here as well, representing from Leeds. What else we got on display? Nice. Yeah, loads of stuff. It's all looking very good so far. But I've I've got us into a bit of a trap here. Let's see if we can get out. There we go. 
it does carry on a little bit that way as well, but given the amount of crowds that way, we're going to head straight into Hall 2. So there we go. Look at all the optics here. Loads of stuff. Ooh. I've never seen a silver one of those before. That's quite interesting. I like that. What are we looking at? This is Staffordshire Military Airsoft and Army Surplus. It's a name I've not come across before, so nice to see new people. Falcon tactical stuff here, loads of Falcon rifles. Uh, they're making a bit of a big splash into Airsoft out of the paintball market, so uh, yeah, they're really going, going quids in on this, which is excellent. What else have we got? Lots more. Yeah, just, I'm going to say rifles a lot because there's so much stuff on this. Like, oh, this is the new. The new Nemesis DT4, double barreled M4. Check it out. Now, this is the first time I've actually seen one of these in the flesh, so this is nice. I've seen uh, videos on YouTube, uh, American Airsoft is firing these as well. I think Spartan 117 GW has, um, uh, has plenty of videos on this. He's actually put twin tracers on it and, uh, and used it as a kind of a, a laser gun, as it were. It's, it's, it, I'd be interested to see how well it shoots practically. You know, two mag well, so double the change time, you know, if you need to change magazines, but. That's really interesting. I like that. And it feels solid, actually. More, more solid than I thought. I was expecting it to be quite plasticky. But no, that's pretty cool. I like that. What else we got? Oh, we got the new Lancer. Uh... Sorry, I'm just going to reach over here. <laughs> new Lancer tactical. We looked briefly at these when we did the Northern Shooting Show as well. We saw a stand, I think it was Fubar Bundy's stand, actually, that showed these. Um, that's a pretty, it's a pretty sweet looking gun right there. And again, you've got your flashy red bits. It's all very trendy. But um, yeah, I, I, I like the look of that a lot more uh, than some other guns of a similar nature. You've got your little cutouts there on the magwell. Yeah, that's really nice. And it, again, feels solid. Feels like it would shoulder pretty well. And it doesn't, uh, it's still a little bit obstructive getting to the fire selector there. But anyway, that's all personal preference. So we don't want to worry about that right now. Let's carry on going. Oh, we got a more charity stuff here, haven't we? Yeah, we've got another, another uh, company supporting charity over there. They've got a bucket on their stand collecting money. Uh, Leicestershire Airsoft. Let's have a look at this one, shall we? Now, you see, I like it when people display pistols like this. So it just looks nice, doesn't it? And they've got the new ICS XFG. Uh, I'd like to get my hands on that as well, see how well that shoots. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll bring one of those to you and do a review soon. But it's a nice sort of compact uh, pistol. So yeah, no, I like that, I like that a lot. Uh, what else have we got here? More guns, more rifles. Let's carry on this way. Ah, I can see down there. It looks like we've got some kind of uh, shooting range going on. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. We'll get around to that last. Save the best till last. Oh, here we got a few more era pieces. That's pretty cool, I like those. More bits and pieces. Again, yeah, there's, there's loads of stuff on offer. I'm really surprised. If you need your camo, you know, there's no shortage. Check it out, we got Multicam, we've got uh, DPM, it looks like we've got some ATAX in there, some Multicam Trophic, a few, uh, a few lesser known pieces as well, which is quite cool. I've no doubt if you were doing yourself a Russian loadout, you'd be well catered for there. Let's move around this way. Ah, food, most important. And we've also got the Tactical Coffee Company here as well, uh, who are a veteran-owned company, as the flag says, but uh, it's nice to see them representing here as well. Really good coffee. It might blow your head off a bit if you're not careful, but really good coffee. Ah. Ooh, hello. Don't see many of these flying around nowadays. The uh, WA2000, I think that's an Aries product, if I remember rightly. Uh, that's an interesting thing. I don't see many people skirmishing that, probably because it weighs so much. But... And then we're on to patches. Everyone's favourite. Patches, patches, patches. Oh, man. <laughs> Star Wars, anybody? I like the Death Star one, actually. I might get myself one of those later. Loads of stuff going on here. 
Uh, yeah, and they've got more division uh, sort of related patches over there, and umbrella armories, uh, loads of Marvel related ones over there, your Iron Man and your Thor and all that kind of stuff. Let's carry on moving around. Airsoft Wholesale UK, not familiar with them. I've never heard of them before. I don't know if they're relatively new or not, but maybe I'm just ignorant. Is the Midland Airsoft Fair, and we are here with Chris from High Pressure Airsoft. Welcome to the uh, the stream. Thank you very much. So, for anyone who isn't aware what High Pressure Airsoft is, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, basically, High Pressure Air is anything, any gun that's powered by an external airsoft or high pressure air in general, really. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> we get rid get rid of the annoying whir noise. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So um, you get rid of the, the, the horrible noises, uh, the rate of fire goes up, consistency goes up, the pleasure of consistency is better, accuracy goes up, um, so the reliability, reliability is so much better than these. Uh, my experience wasn't the case, but I think that was user error, I will admit. <laughs> well, it, it was a tipman, <laughs> so that may have been the issue. Well, yeah, they do take a lot of tinkering, but again, they are... Yeah. Uh, and what have you brought with us for this show here? So today I've brought with you, uh, I've brought with me, a Wolverine MTW. Ah. Uh, these are like the hottest thing going at the minute. Uh, they're made in Tennessee by the guys at Wolverine in America. Yep. Uh, what can I say about it? It's got a forged steel lower. Everything else is all CNC out. Like, I don't know. I didn't really mean anodized. Yep. Yeah. You get a limited lifetime warranty on the gun. You guys warranty on the electronics. Uh, there is no gearbox on the inside. I may as well show you. <laughs> <laughs> so just had a muzzle Absolutely. in my face there. Let's take Pete out at the same time. <laughs> so there's no gearbox on the inside. Excellent. There's a close up on that camera there if you want to show that. Yeah, there we go. So if you turn everything 100% online. There you go. Yep. It's your air efficiency. Brilliant. Air. Well, it's just it's fantastic. And this it's is mil spec, basically, right? It's all so, mil spec, yeah. Any so if you want really part, sick, yeah. For instance, this is my personal MCW. Got a mag four pistol grip. Grip still charging and handle. Got a bad lever. <laughs> uh, right. Because the bolt stuff does work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can use it. Excellent. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, yeah, there's many, many different ways of powering this also. So me personally, I like the air tank. Yes. Yes. Good guys, it gives you a thousand shots. That's plenty for anyone. Five hundred. Oh, a thousand! Wow. A thousand shots. Okay, so that was always been my issue with. Like a, a tank on the back of it, it's like, how many shots can I get out of that? Yeah. A thousand is more than enough. A thousand shots out of your ass, though. If you want to power it, you can like, yeah. more than one, you can get as many shots as you want. Yeah. You also do a CO2 and stuff. Okay. Which is also over there. And that there's a car. Yeah, definitely. And you get roughly 200 shots. Okay. Which isn't a lot, but it's perfectly a motion player. Yes. Uh, and because it's all mill spec, motion players like it. And it feels. Phenomenal. Yeah. It's a great product. It really is. Uh, if you want one, pre Yeah. Because <laughs> I can't get them in quick enough. Oh, and it, it, I'm right saying you can literally pick pieces from what you want on this? Yeah, they come in three different sizes. So you've got a CQB, which is like a 6-inch rail. Yeah. You've got an SBR, which is 10-inch rail. Oh, no. oh my gosh, there it is. Nice. Uh, I, I opted for the, the middle, the SBR, uh, with the internal use In terms of pressure. Yeah. I get the yeah. yeah. And obviously, the suppressor works a lot better with HPA or oh, air, but, but, uh, but it would ever work with a gearbox. Yeah, all that noise, all that noise, by the way. Suppressors do suppress. And if someone's interested, whereabouts are you based? If anyone's interested, you can get a shout out on Facebook, on High Pressure Or just look me up on Google. Oh, look at that. Do you mind if I just have a fill? And obviously Wolverine have done a lot of videos of tests. They've shown 300 foot shot. Is it? I'm pretty yeah. sure 300 foot shots. Uh, speaking from experience, Wolverine are a joy to deal with. The customer service is second to none. That's lighter than I expected. I mean, have you found this? I'm going to have your eager now. Yeah, I am. 
And it's got, obviously, you put a Vortex scope on top of that. Oh, yes. Yeah, so well, we're big fans of Vortex here at Chronos, I must admit. But that is, it is, yeah. The guys are all yeah, I can imagine. And Rich and the guys are fantastic. And, they, and again, they've shown the quality of this working. Um, I'm amazed with the amount of shots out of a tank like that. Yeah, that something a thousand. A couple of years ago, yeah, yeah. a couple of years ago, before I had heard about the Wolverine stuff, that was always my worry. Like a couple hundred shots isn't enough for me for a day. A thousand. I mean, yeah. That. No, it's pretty, and, and I've got to be honest. I, one of the things that's always put me off HPA is the line, having the tank yeah. and the line yeah. and everything, and it's just kind of, well, you know, what if what if I fall over, which is likely to happen during airsoft, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. I, you know, I fall on yeah. my back and I've got this tank <laughs> digging into me. And, I've done it before, it's not nice. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, some, some people may argue that, you know, they'd rather not have this high pressure system right close to their face, but I'm assuming it's been extensively tested. It's and, extensively tested, yeah. it's super safe. The tanks are rated for like three times more than what they're pressurized at. Right, okay. Like, yeah. HPA has come a long way in the last few years. Yeah. A long, long way. Uh, the guns and the kits that are out now, phenomenal. Well, and I love anything to do with HPA. Yeah. <laughs> so for all so you, yeah for all your HPA desires, go hit up Chris at High Power Airsoft uh, Facebook or Google him. Yeah, uh, you'll be sure to get it. Chris, thank you so much for coming today. Appreciate it, mate. Good and uh, you don't need this back, do you? <laughs> I do, yeah. That's fine. That's part of the conditions. You came on here and we came. Yeah, yeah. That was the Did nobody explained this to you. Exposure <laughs> dollars. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Cheers, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, thank you very much, Chris. Yeah. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it, mate. All right, awesome. speak soon. Uh, see, see you later. Guys, if you, so you are go. just watching the Midland Airsoft Fair, you may have heard there's a little bit more noise and ruckus happening. That is because it is time for the Midland Airsoft Fair raffle. That is not the giveaway that we're doing on this raffle, on this live stream ourselves. That is one organised one event, but there are a load of prizes. So we thought we would cut along to them while they're doing the raffle. So stay tuned. We'll cut the camera across now and we will be micing up Matt and he'll be talking about the show. Yeah.
Right, guys, before we do the raffle, uh, we have got a prize which was donated kindly by uh, I Pressure Airsoft. Uh, because it's a little bit unique and you either love it or you hate it, all right? It's a Wolverine Inferno Gen 2 Spartan Edition. Okay, so we're going to raffle that off. Okay, that money will go to charity. We're going to go up in five pounds. It helps, doesn't it? Sorry, we're going to auction that off, my bad. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go up five pound increments. All right, I will literally point to the arms. You must be able to pay for it today in either cash or card. Please don't make a bid and then start asking if you can pay it across on Tuesday. All right? So again, money raised will go straight to Pilgrim to allow them to do the work they do. So for a Spartan Wolverine Inferno Gen 2, we're going to start off at £50. Anybody? £50. Over here, £50. And we've got 55 anywhere. 55 at the back. Anybody? 60. 65 at the back. 70. 75 at the back. 80 anywhere. 80 here. Nine, uh, let's go 90. Let's double it because I can see lots of hands. 90. We've got 95. 95 you. 100. With 100. Five at the back. Yeah. 110 Yeah. 115. 115. 120 anywhere. Anybody? 120. 120. 125 behind. Anybody else? 130. 130 over here. 135 at the back. 140. No, we're going well past that. 140. At the back, yeah, 140. Okay, anybody? 145. 145 over here. 150. Got you, sir, with a beard. 155 anywhere. 155 with a hat. Anybody else? 160. 160 over here. 65 anywhere. 165 with a hat. 170. 170, Steve. 170. 175 anywhere. 72 with Steve. 175 over here. 180 anywhere. 180. Once. 180. Over here. It's already you, sir. Don't increase your own bid. That's stupid. Right. 180. 185. Yeah. 185. Yeah, got you. 185. Yeah, 190 anywhere. Okay, 195. 195 back with this gentleman over here. 195. 200 pounds. 200 pounds of you, sir. First time. Second time. Anybody? 205. 205. 210. Anywhere. 210. 210 with you. Going once. Twice. Three times, gentlemen with a beard, come and see us at the end. Brilliant, thank you very much. You got, uh, you got to write down what that was, 210. Okay then, guys, start the raffle. We are going to start off with our star prize, which is a Tokyo Marui. MTR 16 gas rifle with the extra mag. The bundle's at about 600 quid. Okay, get it on zero one. Sell it to some numpty for 400. All right, you are quids in. Okay, it's a white ticket with a blue border. Okay. The serial number, but not the ticket number. The first top ticket is 559022. 559022. Clearly, ticket number is one. Ticket one on a blue with that serial number. Anybody? Is that a yes? Come forward there. If you want to check and confirm tickets with them, and then. <clears throat> Who is, who's coming forward, guys? Who is it? No, number one, mate. Number one, it's number one with that serial number. Okay, guys, it's a false call. You've got to do the number first.
say? Charlie. And it's one he's purchased. Snoops! You're the new Snoops. You're, you're the most hated person at the fair. Yeah. Right. C-Mel. Okay, guys. Definitely not. I wish it was. All right. Okay, guys. The next prize is a lunch tactical. I think they call it an Evo thingy. Right. Ish. It's a white ticket with an orange. Ticket number 471. 471. Okay, the serial number. Yes. Serial number. Hey, well done, sir. That was easy. Right, I've got this. Watch, I've got it. What? Let's have a look if we've got it. I'm in the flow now. Yeah, there's that Eva. Yeah. It's a white ticket with a yellow background. White ticket, yellow background. 161 to 165. 161 to 165. The serial number is 567. Seven six eight. It's a white ticket, yellow background, one six one to one six five. Serial number five six seven seven six eight. Going once, going twice, redraw. It's a white ticket with a pink background. White ticket with a pink background. Um, Evo, it's the Evo. It's the uh, Lance Tactical. 426 to 430. 426 to 430. Just check your serial number. This will be far quicker. Sorry, miss. You're good for me. Yeah, if you just see him out. You've got a G&G &G 418, sir. G&G &G 418. Well done. Okay, guys, your next prize is for a Vulcan TRGM, kindly donated by Vulcan. It's a white ticket with a pink background. White ticket, pink background, 281 to 285. 281 to 285. 425 on that last three. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yep. Okay, well done, Mike. Just uh, wait for a minute. Okay. Okay, guys, your next prize is for an ICS M4 metal body. Mike's the TLG. It's a white ticket with a pink border. A white ticket, pink border. 30, uh, sorry, 101 to 105. 101 to 105. Anybody, nobody? White ticket, pink border, 101 to 105. All right. All right. Read your Okay, this colour, guys, white and yellow. 451, 455. Aaron. Uh, SM4. You're like you need another gun. <clears throat> okay, guys, next prize. Mm -mm -mm. Thanks, Aaron. It's for a set of ear more. It was, it was definitely that one, mate. Checked. Sorry. Okay. It's what? Ear more ear defenders. You know, you know. All right. It's a white, it's a white ticket, yellow background. One five one to one five five. One five one to one five five. Serial number five seven nine three five. 
Going in five, four, three, two, one. We draw. White ticket, yellow border. 31 to 35. Serial number 567768. He's coming, he's coming forward. Yeah, yeah, of course, I want to get them in. Okay, guys, your next prize. Bear with us, guys. We've only got about five lots left. It's a King Arms. It's a 17. Well, not a lot. All right. Very, very nice guns. It's a white ticket with a green order. Three five six to three six zero with a serial number of five seven six eight one zero. Just give your name to Mel for me. Yeah. Next prize is a Viper chest uh, plate carrier. And holder. It's a white ticket with a pink border. Three nine one to three nine five. Three nine one to three nine five. Serial number five seven two four two five. Anybody? Three. White ticket blue border, 36 to 40, 659496 serial number. Yep, just give your, uh, that gentleman with the black hat chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that gentleman, just his details, um, black hat. Right, guys, your next prize. Come back to where I am. It's for a draft club gift set. Unfortunately, draft club had to cancel today at last minute, but they did send us a raffle prize. So you got a nice ammo crate with some patches in there, some bottles of BBs. It's a white ticket with a green border. 191 to 195. 191 to 195. Serial number 576810. No, unfortunately not. No, redraw, redraw. White ticket orange border 221 to 225. Serial number 589949. This is an all-white ticket, an all-white ticket. 286 to 290. Serial number 555381, Jeanette. 555381. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Jeanette Walker. Okay, for the man about town or lady. The next one is a Viper drug dealer's bag. All right. White ticket, blue border. 331 to 335. Serial number 559022. I guess. Nice. Stereotypical. <laughs> 
No, no, no. Okay, guys, the next prize. It kindly donated by Fubar Bundy. It is a very nice padded gun bag. These are not your standard gun bags. Made with airsofters in mind. Little pouches for your sticks and your mags and all that crap. Right, very, very nice bits of kit. It's a white ticket, orange border. 361 to 365, serial 589949. Hang on, got two hands, 589 to 949. He's still walking, somebody's wrong. Somebody's going to be silly. No, no. That's not his yellow, sorry. Not yet. Uh, yeah, it's coming. Last couple. Uh. Right, guys, last couple of prizes. It's a Viper Battle Belt. White ticket, orange border. 21 to 25. Serial number 589949. Fuck off. Redraw. White ticket, blue border. 196 to 200. 196 to 200. Serial 559022. Redraw, white ticket, green border. Three, nine, six to 400. White ticket, green border, three, nine, six, 400. Five, seven, six, eight, one, zero. Now you got your five, seven, six, eight, one, zero. Three, nine, six to 400. Redraw white ticket blue border, 91 to 95. Serial 559022. Killing me. Have we got a hand up? Finally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next prize, guys, is a Raven pistol. You get your choice of Raven pistol. You get your choice of Raven pistol from Trent afterwards. It's a white ticket, all white ticket. 451 to 455. Series 555381. What's up? Oh, my God. No, uh, hang on. no. Aww. Sorry. I'm going to. I'll check in. There you go. There you go. The next prize is for an Oshi Boom blank firing grenade. Kindly donated by Airsoft Direct. It's a white ticket yellow border. 496 to 500. Serial 567935. Anybody? Redraw. White ticket green border. 21 to 25. Serial 576896. Was that a yes? That's a redraw, yeah? I'm going to just do that as one lot to finish it. Okay, guys, before we... Before we do the last ticket... Before we do the last ticket... From me and Mel, and the guys that help us out, and they give up their own time to do it, 
thank you very much for supporting us. We know we changed the location. We got to jail. Hopefully, we'll be back here next year. Hopefully, you guys have had, had a, good, a better experience than last year. And you'll come back and you'll tell your friends about it. We all talk about wanting an event. We need to support them just like you have done today. So thank you very much. Last ticket from me. It's a white ticket with a yellowish background. 396 to 400-667-776. And that was a shout over there, which we'll is confirmed. Hey guys, we're back. So uh, first off, uh, apologies for the uh, not brilliant picture there of the raffle. Originally we were hoping it was going to take place in our little uh, studio setup, but unfortunately they couldn't fit all the people around us, so they, they made the decision to actually hold it over in the corner. So uh, hopefully you heard at least who the winners were, even if you didn't see who they were. And I just want to say, a few people were commenting, feel free to comment throughout. We are bringing them up along the bottom and we'll respond to the ones we can. A few people have just said, they're two, three hours away, but they've seen what was happened today. They'd like to attend. So yeah. I'm coming for three hours, and I'd say it's worth it. If you come and stuff with either stuff to sell, it's you know, 20 quid for a stand, or you know, a lot of bargains, as well as obviously retailers and manufacturers are here. So yeah. we have Chris from Balkan here with us. Uh, we've got a microphone, Chris. 
Oh, uh, no, we are, we are oh, relying we're, we're on our microphones. Okay. So. We're going we're gonna to stand real close. Yeah, that's it. We're getting comfy. Uh, <laughs> let us know if there are any mic issues throughout the stream. But Chris, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much. From me. Falcon. Relatively new role for you. Yeah, yeah. So, started back in January. Yep. Um, and uh, shortly after a shot show. Uh, and then my first big gig out was at Iowa. Uh, and then you'll find me really visiting most of the stores and uh, sites across the UK now. Uh, showing off the products, right. um, coming and do live events, uh, just like this one. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say, Falcon in previous years, if I was being a bit in the shadows, and they're now starting to kind yeah, of definitely. come forward. So we're, we're definitely building on our team in, across Europe. So there's now four of us in Europe: uh, myself, uh, John, and Ollie in the UK. Yep. And then we have Esther over in Rotterdam. Um, and then between the four of us, we cover Europe uh, for airsoft and both uh, paintball as well. Controversially. Yeah. I would say yes. <laughs> yeah, primarily starting as a paintball company before well, going yeah, into yeah. airsoft. Um, let's go through the lineup of what you've got and specifically what you've got with you today. Okay, so yeah, today I've got one of the ASL guns. Um, so this is the ASL Kilo. Um, there's four ASLs in the series. Uh, there's the Kilo, the Tango, the TRG, um, and the Mod M. Um, primarily, the, all of them have the same middle section. All have the same V2 gearbox. Um, and all have the rear stock that's the same. Uh, what we've changed is the front end, um, but the, all of them come with fiber optic sights yes. and the flip up sights. All of them are ambidextrous, so you've got mag release and fire selector on both the left and right handed side, so it doesn't matter if you're left handed or right handed, right. you can operate with a, the with a rifle. Now that's a rifle I can get behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we've put some other features on, so like we have the um, machine screw on the body here. Okay. So this is on the back of the anti-reversal latch. Yep. So we've just got a machine headed screw on there. That means that if the gun latches up and you flick it to full auto and back again, it doesn't clear. So of having to wind the motor off, spin it up, wind it back on, yep. you can just simply turn the screw, unlatches the gun and, and you're free to fire away again. Um, so it just gets you back in the game quicker. Um, that seems like such a, a, a simple idea that nobody else does. Absolutely, yeah, it's incredibly simple and, and really effective. Yeah, um, exactly. It's literally on the back of the anti-reversal um, caps there, so... Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, that's a, a really nice offer receiver. I will just yeah. bring it closer to the camera, if the guy is in the uh, high-quality production crew there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Look at the quality of that on the print. It's a real nice finish. Um, and the design there, really a big fan of that. And hopefully you can see, there we go, the iron sights there. Um, I've got a TRG L, and the iron sights were, well, it sounds silly, it was one of the things that just drew me to the gun. Really? Yeah, and I was like, I know I can do it with any gun, but I saw that and really liked the look of it. Um, I must admit, I'm having a look at this now. This is the first time I'm seeing this gun, so uh, I've, I've never really known much about Falcon in airsoft. Obviously, I'm familiar with them from, uh, from their paintball. It's a much bigger history there, but um, as far as I know, I know. No, I never, used to, I never used to play paintball. I just, I just know that they're from the paintball background. Um, but yeah, I've never, I've never sort of experienced any of the Falcon products close up. So this is, it's nice to, to get this in the hands, to be honest. And it does feel, I mean, saying it's a it's all polymer, isn't it? Essentially, it's all polymer body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's well, not the good thing is we back it up with a one-year warranty as well, which yeah. is quite unique. It is, but uh, yeah, I've, I've noticed that. I've only seen that as well. A lot of airsoft manufacturers just don't, don't seem to provide any yeah. kind of warranty. Yeah, Maybe thirty if days. You get a thirty-day like warranty. Yeah. yeah. So no, that's a that's a nice feature. But yeah, I know what you mean about these iron sights. Actually, they're very. Uh, Especially with um, with this one, where it's a shorter body, and it means you can use the, the gun for CPB with the fiber optic sights. Yeah. And then if you want to go further distance in the woodlands, you can just flick the sights up, and um, it makes it a bit more versatile. Yeah. And what's the other models available on that? So um, this is the Kilo, and yep. then we have the Tango, which is the the tan coloured one. Yeah. Um, the TRG, and then the Mod M. Okay. And retail price on these kind of models? Uh, so they're retailing about 150. Okay, so you're a beginner, we get beginner friendly yeah, yeah. budget rifle, you know, it's going to be something Absolutely, you get out yeah. of the box and go. Um, which is why I brought my TRG at the same time, which was about the 180 mark at the time. Yeah, by the time um, you've got a battery, a charger, yeah. bag of BBs, you're still sub 200 pounds usually. Yeah. I do like those ambidextrous features. And it's a nice big nice size, paddle. decent sized uh, mag yeah. release there as well. Yeah, it's in good reach of the finger as well, so yeah. you can get to it easily. Yeah, no, it's really nice. I like that a lot. And, and what else is coming out of Falcon? So, uh, what's coming very, very soon is our new pistols. Well, not, we've had them before, but yep. they're new to stock again in the UK and Europe. Uh, so, we've got the AVP 17, that being black, gold, and silver. Yep. Um, and then, <laughs> sorry, a bit of a cough there. 
And then we got the um, AP92, uh, which I uh, be um, available in black yeah. and as a CO2 variant as well. So be able to buy gas mags and CO2 mags, but become a standard as CO2. Yeah. Now I remember IWA not this year, last year was when you were showing off the pistol. I almost said for the first time at that point, yeah, it was yeah. still early. Yeah. There was a lot of demand for it. Yeah, and I think um, it's got its own very unique look. Um, Absolutely, yeah. It's, um, it's got the rubberized grip to it. It's quite chunky. It's different to the, the standard 17s and 92s that are out there. Yeah. Um, it's a bit more futuristic looking, almost. Yes. Um, and yeah, demand was was very good. So um, and already the the units that are due in to, to Rotterdam uh, this week um, and coming over to the UK in the next week or two, um, there's a lot of demand from a lot of retailers who already purchased some up. So um, getting to your shops quick and anyone that's a, a, a Falcon dealer get into them quick and, and purchase your pistols and in terms of Falcon dealers do we have a do you know how many we've got yeah, we're, we're building on it um, at, at the moment quite, uh, quite rapidly more and more dealers are taking Falcon on as we build the brand and yeah. uh, becoming more aware so but if anyone gets any trouble finding a Falcon dealer they can contact us through the Falcon UK page um, we also have the Falcon Alliance um, Western Europe I was going to ask um, about so, that very shortly yeah. so yeah Falcon Alliance is um, Falcon Alliance is like a, a, a gathering of, of, of airsoft players that support the Falcon brand, really. So it's not all about Falcon. Um, we, we have the, um, the Western Europe page is just to cover Western Europe, yep. obviously. Um, the idea is to build a bit of community around Falcon. We can let you know where we're at. If yep. you've got questions about Falcon, you can put it on there. But equally, if you're an airsoft player and you, you've got um, information to put on there, you can put it on there. If you've yep. got questions that you want to raise on there, the idea is to build a bit of a community, a bit like Airsoft Nation, yeah. you know, that it's a community for players to go to, a hub where everyone's got a common interest. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I was, I became a member just the other day, um, and it's obviously been a, a US incentive for quite a while. There's, yeah, it's been absolutely. a big thing over in the US. And one of my comments at the time was like, why do we not have one in the UK or in Europe? So I think it's a fantastic way for people who are, uh, you know, Valken enthusiasts or someone who's got Valken to go to, whether mm. it's to find a resource or to chat or to find out where you guys are next at and what events are coming up. Absolutely, and you know that you're getting someone that works for Falcon, so I'm an admin on there. So, you know, if you fire a question through, it's going to come through to me, I can yeah. answer it um, and hopefully get you the answer that you need, rather than, you know, someone that's um, maybe just interested in Falcon but may not have the right answers. Hopefully we can get you the right answers as well. Cool. Um, so that's the main reason for it. Excellent. Now, one of the things I was interested in, uh, we're on that camera now, aren't we? Um, one of the things I was interested in uh, when we were talking before the interview began was the fact that, I mean, yes, they make some cool guns, they make lots of Gucci little bits of kit, but the, the nuts and bolts of it, the, uh, the, the stuff that feeds your gun, BBs, gas, batteries, etc., these guys also produce those kind of things. Um, in particular, the batteries I wanted to have just a quick chat about because yep. everyone knows about NIM batteries, nickel metal hydride, everyone knows about lithium polymer batteries, but you also produce lithium-ion batteries. Yeah, so lithium-ion batteries we've had for a little while now. Um, not so well known, especially in the airsoft industry, but people are coming around to them now. So uh, they're a huge advantage to the regular uh, NIMS and LiPo batteries. The, the best thing with them is that um, they're 2,500 milliamp, um, so you're getting huge amounts of charge from them. Yeah. The discharge is, uh, the rate of discharge is more consistent, even more so than a LiPo. Um, so you make better use of that um, energy that you've got. Um, they also come in 7.4 and 11.1, so you've got both options. But back to the more traditional shape of a, a 9.6 NIMS. Yeah. So they fit nicely in the stock tube or, yeah. or down a um, crane stock, the crane stock, stock like yeah. that, either side, um, without the rattling around that sometimes you get with a LiPo. Um, and the good thing is, if you charge it up, I mean, it's great for rental sites. If you charge it up today and you don't use the battery, you leave it for six months and it'll still be fully charged. So right. It's not going to discharge like a LiPo will. Yeah. Um, and also, um, you can run that battery right down to zero and recharge it. Yeah. If you take a LiPo below 10%, you're going to struggle to get a charge yes. back into it. Don't oh, yeah. do that. Do not advise <laughs> trying that on out. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> using, uh, I mean, using camera equipment, I'm a photographer by trade originally, so I've, a lot of my equipment uses lithium-ion batteries. Yeah. I've always yeah. wondered, why doesn't anybody make lithium-ion batteries for, for guns? But every there other you industry are. uses it. Oh, yeah. Your mobile phone has it, your laptop has it. Drones. Um, yeah, drones. Yeah. And yeah. Remote control. If you look at what remote control cars uh, are, are fitting now, it, it's the same sort of thing. Anything that's remote control now is running on. So right, okay. why, not, why not put it in your airsoft gun? Do you need a, another specific charger for those, or can you run you it can off the same a specific charger, but they will charge off a LiPo charger. charger. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, typically they take a little bit longer because they're 2,500 yeah, milliamps. So yeah. It's going to take you about two to two and a half hours to charge. 
but then you're charging all that extra yeah, energy. It's going to last that much longer, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, no, that's brilliant. If anyone wants to find out more about Malcolm, where can they go? Uh, so they can go on to Malcolm.eu. Um, that's the main website for, for Europe. UK, yeah. um, they can find us on Facebook, um, again, Malcolm UK, or through the Alliance page. Um, so either one of those outlets, really. Perfect. Fantastic. Thanks. Chris, thank you very much, mate. Right. Saved by the bell. <laughs> yeah, let you go because your bum's ringing. <laughs> Chris, Cheers. thank you very much. Appreciate that. All the best. Guys, you, guys. you know Cheers. where to find Falcon if you're interested in any of the products. Uh, as I said earlier, I've got a TRGL. Um, have had that for, wow, two years now, actually. Really? Oh, wow. And that was the gun I did say earlier. I had to change the hot rubber. But beyond that, it's been pretty good. Uh, my local site did actually change... The, uh, the battery for me. I wanted yeah. to run off things, but I couldn't have been happier with that. Um, and it's been a, a great rifle. It's now typically my loaner rifle, so whenever <laughs> I've got a friend that wants to come along, I'm like, you can take this. Yeah. It is poly polymer, yeah. but it's actually very solid. I, and I don't have a problem with polymer. No, nor do I. I'm, I'm a bit more and more drawn to actually polymer's fine. Yeah. I mean, my very first rifle was uh, an Amoeba. CCR, you know oh, the little yes. pistol type wow. thing. I've still got it. I still run it. It's been. I mean, I've done some stuff to it now, but <laughs> it, it, it just runs. It's a brilliant gun, um, and it, it's, it's all polymer. It's really light. Uh, I can run it all day without getting tired, and it just, it just, yeah. Again, it performs brilliantly. Without, there's no detriment to having that polymer body at all. There's no flex in it. It doesn't mean the yeah. BBs are going to go. You know, no. it's, uh, there's nothing wrong with polymer. So, so get over it, people. <laughs> well, you heard it right there, <laughs> guys. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. We have the Airsoft Nation uh, big giveaway coming in a few minutes, and an interview with Longbow. But after that, we've still got ASG to come. We've still got Attack Sense to come, and we've got GBLS. Yes, which so, I'm looking forward to. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Until then, enjoy it a little bit of this video. Roll the tape. The first thing we see here is uh, caring for forces, uh, their big stand here, so it's a nice, there's a few charities here today which is good to see that they're represented as well, but we've got a, a raffle going on for Pilgrim Bandits as well, and one of the prizes you can win is a rather nice Tokyo Marui gas rifle, it's pretty, uh, pretty dope. Moving on we've got lots of, uh, what should I say? Uh, car boot tile type sales going on here, so lots of people with lots of gear as well. Uh, I mean, what, looking at this, we've got a nice looking sort of DMR setup there. You've got lots of gear and camo, magazines, AKs, MP5s, uh, G3, that's pretty cool. Um, wow, one thing I did want to show you, back onto this stand. How awesome is that? Check it out, it's the new uh, KWA Ronin uh, with a custom paint job with the Division uh, computer game logos and everything on there. That is wicked, I, I'd run that all day long. It's just, it looks awesome. So yeah, very pleased with that. Anyway, we're gonna move on. Yeah, that's the smaller one, is it? That's the smaller, the base. Right, moving on. So, this is us where we're gonna be live streaming from here, or we are live streaming from here, you're watching it now. So uh, that's awesome. What have we got? Uh, ASG, good friends ASG, they're here in force with all their gear as well, which is nice. So plenty to show on there, <laughs> including, we can't get to it right now, but they've also got the new uh, Shadow 2 pistol, which it's, it's a monster. In fact, there's one over there. We're just gonna look at it on someone else's stand quickly. Oh, there it is. It's, it's also, it's really solid pistol. This is brand new out. Uh, compatible with their original Shadow magazines, which is nice as well. But it feels solid and it's, it's weighty, but it feels good in the hand. So that's, that's brilliant. Maybe we'll do a review on one of those coming soon. Moving on. OK, let's see if we can fight our way through the crowds here. Plenty of uh, what are these, Kydex 
Kydex holsters. Those are pretty. In fact, is it the same? It looks like the same guys we saw at the Northern Shooting Show, which is nice to see. Um, so yeah, lots of different options. You can want to come Tropic there, Multicam, Multicam Black, and all that. So they're cool. Uh, oh, Alien Pulse Rifle. <laughs> Everyone loves that. Right, we're going to move on, get through these crowds. You can see how busy it is today. To be honest, I wasn't sure how many people were going to turn up, but I'm pleasantly surprised by the turnout. So let's carry on. <laughs> Big stand here from Ammo Drop as well. Loads of stuff on display, including uh, they got the 40 mics. They got the new master mics? No, not yet. But uh, yeah, lots of bits and pieces on display there. And Ola Gay. That's good stuff. A few, uh, few interesting rifles on display. Ooh, shiny red there, entering into the speed soft world. It's getting a bit more fashionable now, having colourful bits on your gun, not just for speed softers as well. Uh, what else have we got? More rifles around there. Lots of bits and pieces. We'll carry on this way. Right. Oh, new prop. Seriously, these guys will turn up to anything. <laughs> anyway, lots going on. They've got their own music playing as well. Loads of stuff on display. A lot of this we've seen before, I've no doubt, but uh, there's a few custom painted guns over there which are looking quite nice as well. So, something a bit different. Ah, they've also got the new... I don't know if you've seen these or not, but the new grey version of the, uh, the Romeo. Uh, AK as well. Now these are surprisingly good out of the box. Um, I've spoken to a couple of guys who, who know their stuff and uh, one of the technicians I know actually bought one of these and hasn't done a thing to it and it performs brilliantly. So well worth looking at those. So let's move on. <laughs> nice. Lots more second-hand stuff here, so yeah, it's, it's so much on. It's so much on offer. I'm, I'm really blown away by it, to be honest. Just goes to show how much airsofters spend on gear. <laughs> uh, so we got Fubar Bundy here as well, representing from Leeds. What else we got on display? Nice. Yeah, loads of stuff. It's all looking very good so far. Uh, I've, I've got us into a bit of a trap here. Let's see if we can get out. There we go. Now, it does carry on a little bit that way as well, but given the amount of crowds that way, we're going to head straight into Hall 2. So there we go. Look at all the optics here. Loads of stuff. Ooh. I've never seen a silver one of those before. That's quite interesting. I like that. Who are we looking at? This is Staffordshire Militaria Airsoft and Army Surplus. It's a name I've not come across before, so nice to see new people. Falcon tactical stuff here, loads of Falcon rifles. Uh, they're making a bit of a big splash into airsoft out of the paintball market, so uh, yeah, they're really going, going quids in on this, which is excellent. What else have we got? Lots more, I'm going to say rifles a lot, because there's so much stuff on display. Oh, this is the new, the new Nemesis DT4, double barrel M4, check it out. Now, this is the first time I've actually seen one of these in the flesh, so this is nice. I've seen uh, videos on YouTube, uh, American Airsoft is firing these as well. I think Spartan 117 GW has, um, uh, has plenty of videos on this. He's actually put twin tracers on it and, uh, and used it as a kind of a, a laser gun, as it were. It's, 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 I'd be interested to see how well it shoots practically. You know, two mag well, so double the change time, you know, if you need to change magazines, but... That's really interesting. I like that. And it feels solid, actually. More, more solid than I thought. I was expecting it to be quite plasticky. But no, that's pretty cool. I like that. What else we got? Oh, we got the new Lancer. Uh... Sorry, I'm just going to reach over here. <laughs> new Lancer Tactical. We looked briefly at these when we did the Northern Shooting Show as well. We saw a stand, I think it was Fubar Bundy's stand, actually, that showed these. Um, that's a pretty, it's a pretty sweet looking gun right there. And again, you've got your flashy red bits. It's all very trendy. But um, yeah, I, I, I like the look of that a lot more uh, than some other guns of a similar nature. You've got your little cutouts there on the magwell. Yeah, that's really nice. And it, again, feels solid. Feels like it would shoulder pretty well. And it doesn't, uh, it's still a little bit obstructive getting to the fire selector there. But anyway, that's all personal preference. So we don't want to worry about that right now. Let's carry on going. Oh, 
we got more charity stuff here, have we? Yeah, we've got another another uh, company supporting charity over there. They've got a bucket on their stand collecting money. Uh, Leicestershire Airsoft. Let's have a look at this one, shall we? Now, you see, I like it when people display pistols like this. So it just looks nice, doesn't it? And they've got the new ICS XFG. Uh, I'd like to get my hands on that as well, see how well that shoots. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll bring one of those to you and do a review soon. But it's a nice sort of compact uh, pistol. So yeah, no, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, what else have we got here? More guns, more rifles. Let's carry on this way. You can see down there, it looks like we've got some kind of uh, shooting range going on. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. We'll get around to that last. Save the best till last. Oh, here we've got a few more era pieces. That's pretty cool, I like those. More bits and pieces. Again, yeah, there's, there's loads of stuff on offer. I'm really surprised. If you need your camo, you know, there's no shortage. Check it out, we've got Multicam, we've got uh, DPM, it looks like we've got some ATACs in there, some Multicam traffic, a few, uh, a few lesser known pieces as well, which is quite cool. I've no doubt if you were doing yourself a Russian loadout, you'd be well catered for there. Let's move around this way. Ah, food, most important. And we've also got the Tactical Coffee Company here as well, uh, who are a veteran-owned company, as the flag says, but uh, it's nice to see them representing here as well. Really good coffee. It might blow your head off a bit if you're not careful, but really good coffee. Ah. Ooh, hello. Don't see many of these flying around nowadays. The uh, WA2000, I think that's an Aries product, if I remember rightly. Uh, Hey guys, welcome back. We are at the Midland Airsoft Fair for the mega stream. Yeah. Uh, trying to do it from, from 12 o'clock to now. And this has been the thing a lot of people have been commenting on. And feel free to leave your comments below throughout because we are about to do the prize giveaway yep. for the draw. Uh, prize entries are closed, so don't try and enter now. Uh, but before we do that, I thought we'd bring Jason from Longbow, the man himself, on because he got a lot of these prizes to give away for this giveaway but also he's got a very very rare SRS here this is something very special <laughs> so Jason why don't you talk a little bit about this and what makes it special I think people know what it is just by looking at it really it's the <laughs> limited edition SRS lightweight it uh, weighs about a kilo less than the lightest SRS they did score on it's just a shade over two kilograms because it's spread out over a very you know, deflate thing, you just don't feel it. It's yeah. so light. It's got a sort of cut out on the CD, you can see there. It's also got a twisted barrel in the other, you can see. The I'll bring it close to the camera while you're talking. It's, uh, it's just got a carbon fibre suppressor in the front, which you can see it's a real carbon fibre. And it's got the back of the foam well. And this is the longbow version, which is number 10. You can't actually see it because it goes under the cheek press. It's a uh, showpiece only, much as my display. I love to use it. Well, it's a lovely bit of kit, and when you handed it to me, I was I was expecting to take a, a bit more of a lump. <laughs> you know, when somebody hands you something, you, you're kind of ready for it. Fair, fair. And, and I nearly threw it through the ceiling. It's just so light, <laughs> yes, you know, there's nothing to it. <laughs> and only a hundred in the world. I mean, that is. Uh... Yeah, it's... And do we know how many are in the UK? I don't know. I know I, mean, I had, and we sold our allocation in hours. Yes. Um, they Before they were even in the country. Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like most services, they're free they sold. Well, what do you reckon? What, less than 25% in the country? Yeah. Yeah. Can't. Yeah. We've got some big retailers here, so the SRS. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I guess I'd. If you want to be to guess, I'd say. About 25 cents. 25 cents, yeah. I reckon that's probably that fair. You've got the rest of the world. You can't take them yeah, all over yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, beyond obviously this uh, SRS, yes. you obviously specialise in the SRS stuff. Yeah. Um, Try to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about Longbow and what else you uh, obviously are involved in. Uh, well, we've got the modifier. We're also doing GBLS 
Uh, I personally own both, so I can stand behind it. I can't sell something I haven't used. I can stand behind it. Yeah. It's rubbish. It's not going to go. Yeah. I can't do it. It's just, uh, not the way we work. Well, that's so nice. Yeah, I just want to say we have got GBLS coming up any time now. Actually, they are there. We're running a few minutes late, so uh, so you'll see GBS any minute now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, like, I think you're right, you've got to stand behind the products you use and yeah, you trust. I mean, so good, Sprint Custom Billy, we've got all the products here today with us. Uh, had a really good reception on those. Uh, lots of uh, people inquiring about the Billy, the trousers we're doing as well. Yes, they're expensive, but they're so well made. You know, these things go. won't rip if you, you know, go through a brand of they they're just made to last. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got a Jack Pike leaf suit. Um, this is a lot more of a harder wearing superior yeah. product in it's, terms of the, the, the material cool. there. It's, it's, a, it's a quite a tough mesh, it's yeah. breathable and you can add to it yourself. Yeah. So yes, I know there's a price point on these, but they're all handmade. Yeah. The whole thing's made by a couple of people over it from the SCG uh, factory and then we just get them as one can. Yeah. And I want to thank Sprint Across Gillies for um, giving us this for the giveaway. That's absolutely Incredibly generous of them because it is hand made. Yes. You know, you you really are putting time and effort to, to do a giveaway like that. Yeah. And what's in the future for Longbow? What other products are we looking at at the moment? Is there anything in the pipeline? There's a couple of things, but I can't say. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh. Uh, we've kind of. I think, you know what, actually, I can say. There are, <laughs> there are things, but I'm not going to say right now. It's, Jesus. Uh, to come. Well, before we do the draw. Excellent. If anyone is looking into BBs or uh, the SRS or even the modified rifles, which I thoroughly recommend, uh, yeah. where can they go? Longbowbb.co.uk. Uh, we have confirmed we will be stocking the modified PP2000 when it's released in September. Okay. That's a gas blowback. Yeah, yeah we spoke about it earlier uh, on the stream. We think it could be around the £300 mark. Okay. It's an educated guess. It's not. No, fine. okay. So we're kind yeah. of uh, wondering about that. But we all are also asking about accessories. Okay, cool. So I have even asked for a carry bag, which is, you know, the Evo bag. Yes. So it's actually PP2000. So you have the PP2000 in there yeah. with mags, with an optic. With, with a torch. Stuff, with a torch. Very cool. Everything, everything set out neatly. Well. Yeah. So, yeah, so for that. That's going to be a bit. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, I think we should do it. We, we get yeah, rid of it. Yeah, so, yeah, guys, yeah. Um, I'm not going to put this down. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, you goose. <laughs> I will pass. I will pass. Yeah, I'll take that off you, shall I? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, worked. we'll try. Nearly worked. Um, guys, um, throughout the last couple of months, I've been promoting the fact we are doing a big giveaway here. Uh, Jason from Longbow has put forward a modifier PDW. We've also XTC yep. PDW. We've also got a Glock 26 Advance. We've obviously got the Sprinter Custom Gilly top half here and a King Arm. Ah, there oh, we go. Yeah. I got worried someone had walked off there. <laughs> <laughs> Me. A King, King Arm's Peacemaker Revolver, uh, which I've recently reviewed. Um, now you've had plenty of time to enter over the weeks, and I'm going to draw here, and I will let you read the names. Okay. So the first one was for the Peacemaker. Okay. Drawing 10%, 100%, it will be four names. Okay, so the first one for the Peacemaker, if you can, is Neil Mc McKins. McKins. I'm not sure how you pronounce that uh, surname. McKins. But congratulations to you. Yeah, you got yourself the, uh, the Peacemaker pistol. So Neil well McKins, congratulations. Yes, you have the Peacemaker. Yeah, um, if you're here and you're for some reason watching the live stream, feel free to come across and grab it right now. And you can take it home with you. If not, I will contact you via your email address. Q50 people turning up claiming yeah, to be Yeah, that's Neil. it. I'm Neil. <laughs> it's like Spartacus all over again. Yeah. Uh, the next prize up was the Glock 26 Advance. Uh, I'll swap with you, and you can be the. Uh, I'm the model for the this model. Oh, okay. Sorry, my hands. Yeah. So this was the Glock 26 Advance, donated by Longbow here. Oh, this is a name. There we go. Mind Gas Rickus. Yes, I would go with that. That's around pretty much oh, about wow. right. Yeah, so Mind of Gas Rickus. Uh, you won that by. Uh, you're based in Bradford. So I will there contact you, you again by email. Congratulations on winning the Glock 26 Advance there. Sure. That's, a bit, that's a bit special, actually. That I'm is rather, nice, isn't it? I'm rather jealous of that. Yeah, I'm rather nice, yeah. Uh, I will swap that over for the Sprinter Custom Gilly. I've been here all day. I really should have uh, entered, shouldn't I? <laughs> Anyway, but pull your name. I'm redrawing it. <laughs> right, how does this go on? If the production team think they're getting in on a win, I'm also redrawing their names. 
Okay. Should we do the obvious choice of where's he gone? Yeah, yeah, where's he gone? Lucky we're not using the green screen today. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Just a, a floating voice here for the next name. I'll let you read the next one out. Uh, the next one is Stephen Simmons. Stephen Simmons. With a D, Simmons. Well, Steve, uh, you're from Northampton. So if you're Stephen Simmons from Northampton, congratulations, you've won the custom sprint at Custom Gilly. Yeah. I'll take this off so it doesn't come to you smelling of me. <laughs> there you go. Might want to wash it. <laughs> yeah. Get it dry and, clean first. And the finale, we won't take it out of the box because I know how well packed they are. It's on there. It's obviously the Modify XTC PDW. If you are interested in looking at the Modify stuff, I have reviewed it both on Airsoft Nation and on the YouTube channel. I would arguably say this is one of the best AGs out of the box. Um, a game changer for the, the price point. Around about 300 prices. is. Um, I'm going to get the G1 in the summer, already confirmed. Uh, I just needed something a bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> and the winner of that, and I'll let you read that out since you uh, gave the prize on there. One in. Bottom one, please. Josh Ainsworth. Yeah, so Josh Ainsworth, congratulations. You're also from Northampton. So Thanks. We, we, we might save on postage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so congratulations, Josh. Yeah, we well will done, be Josh. in contact, unless, of course, you are here. Uh, and feel free to come along and collect the prize. Congratulations to all the winners. Well done, guys. Well done. Thank you, Jason, so much no, for thank you. Uh, thank you. doing yeah. the giveaway. It's really thank you for uh, gracing us with this rather special thing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I, if anything else, I'm glad I got to see this today. <laughs> and a lot of interest. Yeah, yeah. I'll believe it. And I'll I'm believe it. No, that's, that's it. it. They're all gone. All gone. All gone. Okay. Guys, once again, head along to longboatbb.co.uk. Uh, for all your BB needs, SRS, modify. Yep. Uh, thanks once again, Jason. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Um, right. I'll take that over this side because up next we do have Eric from GBLS. Oh. Is he waiting in the wings? We, we are waiting in the wings. Right. Cheers. We are running about 10, 15 minutes late. <laughs> so, um, Eric, would you like to come around? This is... Uh, we are... Um, so guys, if this is the first time you're tuning in, this is the epic live stream with Airsoft Nation and Kronos Airsoft, and we are at the Midland Airsoft Fair. Um, yeah, coming up to three hours. Yeah, it is now. I must yeah. admit, I've not talked for this long ever, <laughs> I don't think. So uh, it's been a really good show. It's been a really good turnout. Uh, if you've never been before, then you really should consider it next year because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the amount of stuff on show. Um, and if you've just missed it, unfortunately, uh, we've just done the Airsoft Nation raffle prize giveaway. Uh, congratulations again to those winners. But now we're here to talk with this chap about this gun. Hello. And you've not managed to fire this yet. We spoke earlier. You've I not fired it yet. I haven't had a go with this yet. Come so. over to the range later. Uh, yeah, yeah, I plan to. <laughs> before you pack away. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Eric, so, Eric from GBLS, welcome. Nice to meet you. For anyone, yeah, again, <laughs> for anyone who's not aware of what the GBLS yeah. is. Um, so, the GBLS uh, was designed as uh, a training platform. Yep. Um, so, obviously, now fully for AR style. Um, yeah. But um, we believe it's the most realistic electric airsoft gun there is. Right. Um, so, I mean, inside, the best way to describe it is the lower half is like a PTW. Yep. Um, the upper half is like a gas bubble. Right. So there's no gas involved. No. Okay. The air. Um, and so, I think the, the, the unique thing about it is they've gone for as much realism as possible, including um, the order in which things happen. So, it's uh, the BCG inside, which can be seen. So there we got, go. um, actually, this whole thing reciprocates as it does in the gas blowback right. uh, and the real thing. Yeah. Um, and inside is a spring and a piston. It's going to okay. hold the camera. Yeah, it's so up to the camera yeah, while yeah. you're pointing it out. So, as the sweat system works, that the whole thing moves. Um, okay. And Much like a real bolt. Yeah. And a real when gun. it's cocked, yeah. uh, the round is in the breech, um, and it's ready to go when you pull the trigger with the trigger, which is actually mechanically linked to the piston. So when you once you no. kind of overcome the brake, then the piston goes and it fires. So almost like a sear electric. or something like that? Yes, or? yes. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a sear at the back of the gearbox. Okay. Um, and in essence, it's a springer yeah. with an electric with electric parts, Doing the spring which, pulling bit. Which pull, yeah, which <laughs> pull it for you. So obviously ah, the first time yeah, right, okay. you have to charge the system and load around in. Um, so that, again, there you've got the, the manual of arms, which is the same as the real thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, and after that, locks locks back on empty uh, with the bolt back in the in the the, the, uh, the stock tube there. Yeah. Um, change mag uh, and press the button, release catch to go. Excellent. And this is obviously the newer model. 
Yes, so this uh, just came out uh, a few months ago. Um, so uh, when we first launched, we had a 12 and a half inch. Uh, that's the GDR15. Yeah, yeah correct. Um, mm. So a lot of people have been asking for this. When yes. can we have a shorter one? Um, and so <laughs> uh, I think in the USA, they've had the short one with the Centurion Arms uh, handguard, but we brought this in with um, the, an M lock handguard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of GBLS's own design, inspired by <laughs> um, what is out there. Yes. Uh, but um, yeah, no, this has been really popular. I think we've definitely found a lot of buyers were waiting for this model yeah. before yeah. Um, before kind of coming to the system. I, like, I must admit, I like the handguard. It's uh, a lot of the times when, as soon as anybody goes M lock or key mod, they feel the need to make it as low profile as possible yes. and yeah. super skinny. Where, the fact that the, this sort of M lock section protrudes a bit actually gives you a bit more to grip onto, yeah. I find. Uh, and you've got somewhere to rest your thumb as well, which is you know, useful for extending that front arm. Um, um, so the CQB actually also comes with the EPG C right. uh, pistol grip, so slightly steeper angle yeah. Yeah. For, for CQB. Yeah. I think someone's put the wrong lower on this one. <laughs> um, but uh, it, uh, as they come uh, from us, uh, there'll be a blank, there'll be blank receivers as well. Um, so for people who want to do their own markings, send it to the radios. Right, okay. So I'm assuming because of that bolt's moving, then there's the, the buff, that's where the buffer tube's taken up yep. with all so, that mechanism. I mean, this, this mechanism yeah. in here is very much like the real thing. It's got yeah. the recoil spring, yeah. uh, uh, the buffer, the recoil stop, whatever they call it. Yeah. Um, and so that you need a stop that can handle the battery. Yeah, yes. something a bit bigger. I mean, these, these EPS stops are, these are amazing. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's so much storage space in those. They're brilliant. Um, but so. uh, they, I mean, there is a solution for people like the Magpul CTR stocks yeah. with the uh, extended butt pad. It does need 11.1 batteries though, so I mean, right, that kind of yeah. limits your, the capacity that you can put in yeah, there. Yeah. Excellent. And if you've not fired one, there is a significant we'll say, recoil in terms of between each shots. And I think it's fair to say it's one of arguably the strongest kind of kick you're going to get from an AEG. Yeah. Um, I know there'll be a lot of people who rival and compare different ones, but um, I've been really impressed with it. And one talking point, and I'm bringing this up because a lot of people will say otherwise, okay. the trigger pull. Right. Now, I've got one uh, to review, worth saying, to review, which will be coming out anytime soon. Um, the rumor was always 11, 12 yeah. pound trigger pull. That is not true for the UK, right? I think the, the reality is uh, most for most players in the UK, they don't know what way and yeah. what you know, how heavy a trigger can get. Yeah. Um, because most airsoft guns just pull a micro switch. Micro switches. So it's just a tiny yeah. spring that moves the, yeah. the, the trigger contacts. Um, so at the power that we sell them at, the, it's around four to five pounds. Um, yeah, my, my one was between three and four. So yeah. my one's there between three yeah. and four. Okay, but uh, and if I you gave that to someone who never fired it before, they'd still say it's heavy. Yes. Yeah. And I, it is heavy, it's heavier than your, from the microsoft your yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but you know there's someone i've never shot a real steel firearm uh, someone who's used that like solely by a single shot i've been playing i'm on what four or five games at this point now in time and you're not getting a tired finger you're not getting, there's a lot of over exaggerations to how people feel with that yeah, yeah. It it's obviously different to if you've never fired it before yeah. uh, from a normal aeg but it's uh, you, that that rumor of 11 pound trigger pull is just like so <laughs> unfounded now. Yeah. It may have been different yeah. when it when the first production rolled out. Yeah. This is kind of pre GBLS at yes. that time. Yeah. Um, but it's just worth saying because I can't stand it when I get someone to go, oh, how yeah. hard's a trigger pull? I'm like, it's not that hard actually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just I mean, even just today, like half of the other people in the range, we we've had the, you know a, a variety of, of reactions from you know, totally unfazed. That's fine. To, yeah. Oh, like is, is the safety still on? Oh, <laughs> uh, really? Oh, well. I mean, it, um, it, just just to try and put it in airsofty terms, if you like, would you would you liken it to a sniper rifle? Because it's doing a similar kind of yeah, so fear, like, piston let's say releasing, you went isn't it? Five hundred FPS without a zero trigger or something yes. similar. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something it's like that. Kind of like you're trying to release this, you know, yeah. spring not pulling a seat, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if, if if it's comparable to something like that, then it's really not an issue. Yeah. To be honest, and obviously you've been running these on a range all day. Yeah. How's it been? What's the feedback been so far? Uh, I mean, overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, it's still not a product for everyone. No. Um, but it's like everyone who's tried it so far has enjoyed the experience. What sort of mag capacity are we talking about? Uh, Sixty rounds. Sixty rounds. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, I mean, it's fair to say, and I mean, you guys are going to. It is still a professional training weapon. Yeah. It is for people that want to go 
hardcore on a professional training system. There's just no doubt about it. Yeah. You want to go as real as you can, uh, as hardcore as you can. Um, you know, you're not going to get much more real than that. Mill Simmers. You're going to get yeah, yeah, yeah Mill yeah, Simmers. Yeah, Mill Simmers. People that really want to go in for the role. Yeah. Um, people that want the reliability of an AG, but still want to have that realism. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think that's the big thing. Gas flowback. It's great when it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In this country, gas yeah. is always a bit of a hit or miss situation, yeah. isn't it? So. Yeah. And when you're a day like this, where it starts off lovely and warm, I mean, rains all the afternoon, <laughs> and the weather drops down, you, yeah, it's yeah. that inconsistency. You don't get that with the, uh, with the yeah. GBLS. Yeah. No, I mean, I've, probably... I've had a couple of gas flowback users by the range today. One even with uh, a Marui NWS. Yep. Um, I mean, which is probably one, one of the ones which performed the best in yes. colder weather. Yes. Um, yeah. Was just like. This winter was going to go for me, um, and obviously this is fine all through winter. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Brilliant. Well, Eric, thanks so much. If no anyone's problem. interested in getting a GBLS, where can they go? Um, so we have about uh, eight, nine dealers uh, in the UK and we're in, across Europe now as well. Um, so if you check out our website, gblsuk.com, um, we'll have a full list of dealers there. Okay. Yeah. Eric, thank you so much, yeah, and uh, no look forward to seeing you at future events. Yeah. Cheers. And thank you for uh, bringing this to my attention. No <laughs> You're trying to get to the right yeah, I'm definitely going to give it a try, definitely. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate yeah, it, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. So, guys, that was Eric from GBLS. You're right. <laughs> live is live. Yeah, that, yeah. We can't cut that one. Uh, guys, that was Eric from GBLS. Um, I say, it's not a product for everybody. No, not it at all. It comes, and we probably should have said that, it comes with a high price tag. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, How high a price tag is it? Do we know? Fifteen, sixteen hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is a PTS. That's a Sistema. That's yeah. that's your kind of price tag on there. Yeah. Um, you're definitely buying into a system that you've got to be sure that you're gonna you're gonna want to use. Yeah. You know. Um, I know uh, Legion Airsoft Events. If you're based in the southeast, they have or the both the event organisers run a GBLS, and a GBLS regularly attend their events to show other Milsim players and bouncing players what it's like and they've even had a few rental ones where people can use them for the day oh, right, just okay. to experience it and see what it's like and yeah. it's gone down really well Excellent. but the big thing about that when you look at a price point people say how can you just find that price point it's like well you can't until you find it and then after yeah. that you make your own mind up yeah, i think absolutely. that's the big point and the thing is people will spend 500 or 400 quid or something on a tri tac or something like that yep. and then spend another 500 plus quid on upgrades for it like we were yeah. talking about earlier you know putting Absolutely. unnecessary upgrades in it or something like that but it, it's you forget how easy it is to over the length of the product spend that kind of money on one single gun so if you can spend that on something that you know is going to do what you want it to do straight away yeah. it's, it's an investment uh, and for me, it's very much kind of like the same way you look at trousers. You could get, you know, your, and this is not to uh, rip into anyone in that combat, <laughs> U, combat UK price trousers, 20 quid, yeah. or cry precision, 300 quid. Yeah. I mean, they're both doing exactly the same. It just depends on what you want it for. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a reason they're 300 quid. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just like there's a reason that's 1500. Yeah. So. Excellent. Well, no, it's, it's uh, super interesting. I am looking forward to actually having a go on that and seeing what that. Because I don't, I've not really used a lot of recoil uh, guns personally, okay. to be fair. Um, not in game, at least, anyway. So it'll be interesting to see the feel of it compared to my little, you know, my either my Bren or my little CCR or something like that with yeah. this little dip, 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 dip kind of, yeah, you know, really, really light trigger pull and just, you know, yeah, bit a... of whining and that's it. <laughs> Going from using the GBLS, which I've been using to review, yeah. and then switching to some of my other AEGs, there is definitely like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 it's like the performance is as good. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. For that price, you're getting a good performance, but it's still no real different performance to other high-end guns at yeah, yeah. You know, a third of the price. Um, but there is definitely that missing aspect of the recoil. Um, you know, every time you change a mag, you've got to slam that. Yeah, um, I, like, I, like, I like that. Yeah, and, you, you know, the, whole, really, the realism of it is yeah. what I'm a attracted to. Yeah, definitely. And you wouldn't feel afraid of that being falling on the floor out the back of a van if you were in a mill sim and it's like, oh, no. it's gone. It's like, yeah, well, it's fine. Yeah. We're not going to lose a stock or break anything. Yeah, or there. body pin or something um, like that. And the warranty covers it. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Did he did he say what the warranty was? I missed that. If you did, no, oh, I don't know. I'm pretty certain there's a very good warranty on there, and they have a right. good repair centre if there are any right, issues. Okay. That's it. I, one of the key things for me is uh, is manufacturer backup. Yes. Like we were talking about earlier, there's there's so many manufacturers out there who don't really offer anything in the way of a warranty on their guns. You're lucky if you get 30 days or something like that. There's only very few that will offer you. Uh, well, 12 months or potentially more yeah. on the product. So That's it's nice right. to see that, yes, you're, you're spending that kind of money, but you're going to get that kind of support afterwards should anything go awry. Absolutely. Excellent.
So what's up next? So we have attack sense coming, although I did just kind of say we'll be back in a minute with him. So I'm thinking I will just disappear for one second, grab ASG and bring them on, and then we'll do attack sense next. Okay? Absolutely so fine. Let me, uh, so guys, if you're just joining us, where the hell have you been? It's uh, the Midland Airsoft Fair. We're live here from Newark Showground. Uh, to be honest, it's, it's getting close to closing time, I think. So we're getting a few stands packing up. But earlier on, it was absolutely heaving with people. Uh, loads of stands, loads of stuff on show. Uh, not just from uh, individual members of the public selling their own second-hand stuff, but also, oh, hello, hello. I've got creepy Ben behind me. <laughs> ben from ASG, I'm welcome. Ready, okay? I'm, I'm fine, how are you? <laughs> we're uh, we're, we're going to have to cope with this one uh, mic, I'm afraid, well, but it should pick out. you up just well, fine. Just shout out to you then. Yes. <laughs> I think Graham will, uh, Graham will return in a minute, I think, anyway. But you brought something rather special with you. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Everybody's ah, seen a bit of this. Here he is. Are you bringing you something else? Oh, I may have stolen something else from the <laughs> stand. <laughs> Excellent. So, Ben. Tell us what you got. Uh, the Shadow 2, which you're probably already sick of hearing about, but it's awesome, so I'm going to tell you that even more. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, we've sold out of them here today. Uh, Ammo Drop had a, a consignment of them, and they've sold through, because as soon as people pick it up and hold it, they can't not take it home with them. Yeah. Uh, it worked on me, uh, and it's worked <laughs> on pretty much everybody else that, that's, uh, that's touched one. Um, Will's actually gone up around the other side to the range to, to test off right. uh, the other model that we've got with us. But uh, yeah, this one's the uh, pre-production model that's been beaten up in Denmark uh, prior to us uh, approving. I was going to say it looks like it's had a bit of abuse. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's probably been been smashed around for about eight or nine has months. It, has it been dropped down some stairs? No. This oh, yeah. Okay. Down some yes. Stairs. Yeah. <laughs> we do have the stair drop pistol with us. Really? Though, yeah. Excellent. I'll just give it another throw at the floor. And, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys recall, but uh, a, few, a few months ago now, wasn't it? I think ASG released a video of them dropping a CZ P09 yep. uh, yeah. down a stairwell and uh, did it about four or five times and it still worked. And then nobody believed them. So Nick and I went to their offices and we filmed it as well and they dropped it another few times and it still worked. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about this. No, the Shadow 2 uh, probably needs no introduction at this point. Yeah. But it's I our, will just take that and bring it close to the camera okay. while you're talking. Yeah. It's our newest CZ license pistol, uh, comes from a pretty uh, healthy heritage of uh, CZ license guns. So we've got the P09 obviously thrown down the stairs, the SP01 yeah. that was uh, the kind of granddaddy of that one. And uh, in real steel terms, the Shadow 2 is like a redesigned, uh, re from the ground up, rebuilt yeah. uh, pistol um, using everything that they've learned from the SP01 development. Yeah. So, in terms of it being an airsoft pistol, it's just bloody nice to hold. I mean, it's. it's it is. Heavy. I mean, you can't really convey this through the camera, but when you pick it up, it's got some heft to it, but it, it feels solid, you know, it's, it's not a bad heft. So. It feels even more solid when you yeah. start pulling the trigger and the slide starts moving yeah, back yeah. and forth. So yeah, it's a great bit Moving here. across. Oh, that will. Uh, <laughs> wow, is that the new Shadow? Yeah, have you heard of it? <laughs> Funnily enough, I haven't seen it on social media anyway. <laughs> back to you, Ben. <laughs> so, yeah, Thanks, it's, Will. It's, uh, <laughs> great bit of kit. It sort of speaks for itself as soon as you get hold of it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, pop down to your retailer and, and touch one. One of the, uh, I did, well, just go through a couple of the differences between the SPO1 and this. Uh, it's got a longer barrel for a start, marginally okay. longer barrel, wider slide, uh, and the grip is totally reprofiled, so okay. it's, it pushes your hand right into into a really, really optimum shooting position. Yeah. Uh, it's got an enhanced competition style, adjustable magazine release. Which I really like, because yes. one of the things I struggle with is, because is, I've, I've got, I don't know if it's stubby thumb syndrome or something, <laughs> but things like 1911s, I always have to adjust my grip to get to that mag release. And it then it back helps, because this area, yeah. the, uh, the grip yeah. area, is actually quite thin. So you make your hand naturally kind of That's actually that a lot of things that people have mentioned today in the magazine release. Yeah. Everyone has been pushing it. And um, me and Ben have been looking at it as well. And actually, we were looking and saying it could actually be handy if you take out the screw. Yeah, that's what you can swap it around. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a really nice Yeah, it's a, it's a refined gun. I mean, it uses internals very similar to the Shadow 1. However, not a lot of people know, but the Shadow One has been improved since it's been on the market. Oh really? So, oh, yeah, okay. so all, all of the little little quirks that needed working out with the Shadow One, yeah. they've been taken back to the drawing board, refined, reworked. Right. Um, you know, for instance, the slide catch on this is hardened, so it won't wear down. Uh, it's like an internal slide catch. Right. Okay. Where it's hardened, it means it will stop it from. And also the uh, the little thumb safety there is not as protruding as it is yeah, on the SPO. That's one of the things I didn't like on the O1 was the fact that I could I kept knocking it into safe 
with my thumb accidentally. Because it forces your hand high on the yeah. ground, and they've obviously responded to that by reducing the profile of the safety. Yeah. So when you hold a shallow one, you can feel, you know, when you try and get a high grip on it, you can actually feel the, the safety digging in a little bit. Yeah. With this model, it pushes your hand up high, but there's so much clearance, it's, it's, it doesn't do that. You know, there's nothing to push your hand back down the grip. Excellent. It's, uh, yeah. Lovely little pistol, um, big pistol in fact. Yeah. <laughs> like I say, if Wait. you do pick one up, if you hold one, be prepared to take it home with you because. Well, I'm going to take that one from you. Yeah. Because I want to talk about this one. Don't worry. I'm going to run away. <laughs> so, now I I know there's a lot of people go. I don't like it. I'm not a P90 fan, but I I actually really like this, and I know it's a love and hate thing, but. Talk us through this uh, very briefly because I know it's been uh, it's been out a little while now. Yep. Uh, collaboration between you and ICS on this. Yes. Uh, and here arms. Here are um, ICS selected to be the manufacturing partner with ASG. Uh, yes, ASG being the license holders for Hera Arms airsoft replicas. Uh, so built around ICS's um, triple S mild rifle system uh, with bespoke furniture on, on the front and the rear. Uh, license from Hera Arms. So, if you're familiar with ICS's system, it's a MOSFET-based uh, electronic trigger control system with a micro switch. So it's got programmable single shot, three round burst, full auto, yeah. uh, free cocking as well. Free cocking is a pretty cool feature, meaning that it will hold the piston back. It actually does that uh, automatically. It yeah. senses where the piston is and holds it back at the optimum point. Uh, you've got a decocking mode. Go in safe. Yeah. Releases the spring tension. Um, basically, ICS is really easy to use uh, rifle. Um, this is based around. It's only available through ASP because of the, the Hera license. Yeah. So you know, you'll only be able to get up at ASP retailers. Um, lovely, high quality polymer furniture. Yeah. I mean, it's, absolutely. It's rendered really, really well. Uh, I know there are 3D printed style guns with a very similar look out there, um, but it's really quality night and day. Yeah. Feel great. You know, even. Uh, Parts like this, that's actually an over molded rubber section, that grip texture. Right, okay. It's actually over molded rubber yeah. as opposed to it just being molded into the plastic. So it's just got that premium feel. Yeah. Um, keep stroking it, it's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the end of the, it's the end of the day, yeah. <laughs> people will forgive so me. So, anyone who's interested in where to buy this or the, uh, the Shadow 2, where can they go? Any of your ASP retailers. Perfect. Uh, yeah, no matter whereabouts you are in the country, there'll be one pretty close by. Also, awesome. where you're up north, down south. Or even in Wales, <laughs> even, even, in, even Wales. in Wales. Hear that? <laughs> Racism. Cool. And I, I want to give a plug here. Chronos Airsoft have done a review on the Hero Arms. Two parts. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we popped down to ASG's uh, office in the UK here to have actually have a look at this and then sort of break it down and have a look at the inside and things like that. Ben was very, uh, very kind in allowing us, allowing us down and, and having a look in detail at it. So check that out on the channel as well. Plus, we've done a shooting test with it as well. Um, and yeah, I, was, I must admit, it felt very nice. That pre-cocking, like you say, is a very nice feature to have because it just, it, the, you know, it just adds to the, uh, the trigger response is a lot nicer. You know, you don't have to wait for that gearbox to pull the piston back and then fire because it's already done the pulling back of the piston. As soon as you pull the trigger, kind of boom. It really matches the externals, you know, the really yeah. nice details. Yeah, absolutely, it's absolutely. It's a rock solid yeah, yeah. Well, funnily enough, a friend of mine has bought one of these and he's super pleased with it. So uh, that's, that's, that's praise enough for me. Awesome. Well, <laughs> thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. And I'll nice see you guys again. And congratulations on the job, Will. And we're uh, oh, yeah. Thanks. For those of you who don't know, this isn't just some random stranger <laughs> who jumped into the shot. This is Will Greenwood, Hi. who's uh, new to ASG. You've been with them how long now? Uh, it's been three weeks, huh? Three weeks. Oh, yeah. Three weeks. It feels like a lifetime. <laughs> the guys are probably getting really fed up because you know, they had a really nice quiet office before I turned up. <laughs> and now there's memes printed all down the walls. Well, yeah. Yeah. You've got me turned up being really like flamboyant and, and, and talking too much. And, Ben loved his quietness before I turned it to life. He's like, silent the topic before I came. Listening to classical music, and now we've got to listen to dubstep. <laughs> dubstep. dubstep. Don't dubstep label me with dubstep. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't listen no to dubstep. Idea. No idea what you're talking about. No. Right. Before we get cut off there, <laughs> yeah. thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it, and we'll see you soon. All right. Sorry, Sorry, you. You could... awesome. Cheers, 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 Right. Ben. Next Cheers, up, we have something super exciting here. We have Neil. From, that's it, you just yeah, go, you we're live, go, so you go. just... Shoo, shoo, shoo. One more thing. We have Neil from Attack Sense. Neil, welcome to the live. This is... Uh, Hi, how are you doing? How you doing? Hi. This is super exciting. Um, I saw this on a YouTube channel, Grada Airsoft, who recently demonstrated this. 
and when I found out you guys were coming here, I was like, we need to show this off. Cool, yeah. So let's talk about what is the What television. is it? Yes. And I guess uh, it's going to be somewhat hard to show here. Yeah, we've only brought one. Yes. And there's not much better than one of them. <laughs> I, have, I will have a video linked in the description after the live stream for sure. So what it is, is a wireless timing system. So no wires. Yep. Um, there's a sensor in here and an illuminator. Um, so it's full colour. Uh, we only use red and green at the moment. So normally red is bad guy, green is good guy. You shoot the bad guys, you don't shoot the good guys. Right, okay. Uh, but we can also run in a two player mode where uh, player one is red, player okay. two is green, and you go head to head. So you go. Oh, you've right, got to change the colours. Yeah. Kind of yeah. yeah. So yeah. what happens is um, all the targets are identical. Yep. They all look exactly I'll, the same. I'll take this, you I'll just show it on the camera. And then the first target you power up, that recognises as the master. Okay. And then it, it kind of becomes a controller. Hmm. What we then do is as you turn on more and more targets, they register with the master and it creates like a mesh network of targets. Right, okay. And we've got an app. So regular tablet app that you then this guy as the master pushes out regular wireless network, the app attaches to that wireless network and then controls the targets. Yeah. So we've got a bunch of game modes that run on all of the targets and they'll light up either each target individually, so this target will light up, shoot it, once you shot it, another target lights up, shoot yeah. that, another target lights up. Or they'll control different amounts of targets all coming on at the same time and you shoot them in a kind of shooting gallery type yeah. affair. And then we've got other modes like we can, um, if you imagine these putting these over a distance, we can have an approach. Yep. So the farthest target comes on. If you don't shoot in time, it's kind of coming towards you. And you've got oh, to shoot that's it. cool. Okay. And then when you shoot the target, it goes back to the back again and comes forward. So what we're doing, though, is we're measuring when you've been hit. So these things have got a sensor in them that can detect the BB or anything down to like a juggling ball or Nerf. Oh right, okay. So you can um, throw things at it as well. Yeah, if you yeah, exactly. To. Yeah, yeah so, I was say, just say, but we, earlier on we were talking about targeting systems and shooting systems. Yeah. This one can be shot at by BBs. Uh, you're not dry firing or messing around. You can actually fire at this. I think yeah, that's a big absolutely. difference. Absolutely. There's absolutely. a sensor in here. So in the way it's designed is um, these targets, the front, uh, the front graphic can come off and you can replace these over time. So as you know, as they do get shot up. Um, every six months or so, you can kind of replace the target okay, material. And you can have different off. things printed on there as well, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. so this is no. what uh, we call this a cyber target. We've got another one that's an actual man. Right. And bigger, that there's some environments like if you imagine the team building events yep. and things like that, you know, Debbie, an account, doesn't want to go shooting at some yes, of course. Of a man, so we've got this one. Um, and then the ones that you probably saw in the other video was a, an actual guy with a humanoid target. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Likewise, so, you could end up shooting at a picture of Debbie from account. <laughs> <laughs> we don't condone that. No. <laughs> um, but the whole thing that happens is obviously we know when we lit the target up, and we know when the target's been shot. So we're measuring your accuracy by shooting the target, um, but we're also measuring the reaction time of how long it took you to show wow. the target. Right, okay. So then the app shows you at the end of a round what your best reaction time was, what your average reaction time was, and there's a full, um, you can go into a kind of high scores area that shows you a full detailed analysis of how well you did. So yeah. if you imagine this in a practical shooting environment, yes. where you can shoot, move, shoot, or shoot, reload, shoot. We're measuring the distance, the difference in time between the first shot and the second shot yeah. to give you an absolute reaction time for that. Yeah. So, where, so as a training tool. So tra yeah, training exactly. Tool. Yeah. So I mean, there's a number of number of modes that it runs in. I mean, we do other kind of CQB type setups where you can use a load of these. I mean, we work up to 32 targets um, with up to 64 shots per round right, okay. in, the, in that. So you imagine a kind of kill house type yeah. environment. Yeah, yeah. We can set up a group of three targets to work in one mode. Once you clear that, you go to another room, there's another three targets that you've got to shoot. Maybe uh, in a certain order, you go to another room and there's uh, more of a target practice type setup. Yeah. And then we'll score you over the complete round. Man, that's impressive. So, yeah, quite quite exciting. And obviously, yeah. you on this is pretty much brand new. I mean, you haven't been around it's, long in terms of no, promoting well, and selling. 
This has been two years yes. in development, and we started selling these uh, about a month ago. Yeah. We went live with it, um, and we're still learning a lot. You know, so what we've built is, I say, quite a comprehensive app. There's a lot to do in it, uh, but there's also a lot of room for us to grow. And what we're now starting to do is to listen to the community. You know, we're like, you know, a couple of guys from near Bedford. You know, we're <laughs> developing this. We develop. Yeah. We manufacture absolutely everything, apart from things like batteries. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the cases, the targets, um, the cases for the battery, the mounting systems, um, graphics, it, everything is it, made it, by it, us. In, in terms of mounting? So in terms of mounting, they come with um, tree brackets. Yep. So it's a strap that goes round a tree, no right. trees are harmed. Okay. Um, and then this shaft here, so the mount goes in there, yeah. and so in a kind of like a um, permanent install, you can leave the brackets up, take these down at the end of the night, take the charge and put them back up the next yeah. day. I mean, and we also do stands as well. I was going to say, it looks like just uh, one of our lighting uh, stands we've got here could, could hold that. Uh, well, it's actually, we buy um, the exactly the same thing as the lighting stands, and then we produce the adapter. If you took one of our adapters off, you will see a standard lighting uh, yeah. unit underneath it. Oh, uh, right, okay. Um, so it saves us having to manufacture the stands. Yeah. But it gives us another um, another option. Yeah, absolutely. But the tree brackets that also come, um, the special bit that mounts into the target, that comes with an M6 regular bolt through it. So if you don't want to use a tree bracket, you can still unmount um, it, it. Um, take some angle iron, whatever, and make a more of a permanent setup from it. So it's very versatile in how yeah. you can set them up, um, but also in how you know all the different training environments. So yeah. we've got like a, a bolt action mode. So any one of our rounds you can put into bolt action, and what it'll do is it'll give you time to reload yeah. between uh, between each shot before the next target goes on so you can get to reload but you can't get to see what the next target state is going to be yeah sweet um, yeah in, in terms of price and where they can so get them from we're doing start packs of five yep. or three nine five and okay. that comes with uh, the tree brackets batteries charger the targets themselves so everything you everything needs to, you get, need to going. get going and then we sell additional targets for 85 yeah. pounds but if you if you want more than five you can just go to our shop Buy the five, add additional targets, and you get the targets at the discounted rate of oh, the okay. pack. Cool. Um, and you know what we're finding guys doing is, you know, maybe, maybe you don't want to buy a whole pack yourself. Yeah. If you, as a, as a, team, a team or group, yeah, exactly. As a team do a group buy, you can all have one target each for the garden, and it will still work as one target for like, you know, dialing in a scope or a hot unit, mm. um, and then you can get together. And then do your, te do your team day, do your exactly. CKB training or whatever, or just yeah. get out on the field yeah. and, and then all go back with your, your targets to the end of the day. And oh, it will really work. Cool. I mean, so we're on the firing range today, yeah. and next door to us is GBLS guys. Yes. And they turned up and said, Oh, what are you using? Because you know, you know, we've just got some paper targets, so we went, Well, we'll have some of ours. And they've just been shooting the hell out of them all day, I mean, yeah. full auto. Well, I'm hoping so, to go and have a go soon. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I mean, they are amazing, yeah. amazing guns. Yeah. Um, so they've been using them, and then, and I think we're going to be doing something with them as well awesome. to kind of, um, yeah, you know, to, to allow them to use it because they're using them in um, what we call flash when hit mode. Yes, so if you just want to use the targets as just you know with shooting targets and get some reaction, you stick them in flash when hit mode, and all they do is you don't need the app, you don't no. need to do anything, shoot target, flashes, and you've been hit. So it's great for if you've got a sniper rifle, yeah. just kind of just doing some distance practice with it, yeah. or as you say, just kind of dialing in a pop or something. I mean, it's awesome. I think it's a great idea. I think we need to see more of that. We yeah. do see a lot of people who are more trying to improve their training, their precision, yeah. their speed and accuracy and all of that. And this yeah. is kind of the tool to help aid that. No, but I also see it yeah. as a really good training device in terms of squad training. See, you know, competition shooting, something like that in a course and a layout could yeah. be absolutely well, crazy. You know, it's fun. Oh, I can well, imagine. Yeah. It. It, it just it's adds true. another right, yeah. fun element to Airsoft. The nearest thing I can think of like this is the G&G &G uh, targeting system, you yes. know, the grids yeah. of sort of nine or fifteen yeah. or whatever. You can't move them; they're all no, on one. They're all in one grid, yeah. fixed in yeah. one position. Yeah. Whereas these, you can put wherever you like, you know, up on the ceiling, down on a tree, you know, yeah. behind a door or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it just adds a, a, another unique, fun aspect to yeah. to this hobby that we all love so much. And we found, I mean, 
yeah, obviously we designed it, we loved it, but we thought, okay, great, will, will the community like it? So we started turning up to skirmish centres, just you know, weekend on weekend on weekend, yeah, um, meeting guys, and we thought, like, you know, so we'd have to kind of up the amp on the um, on the difficulty levels. Yeah. And what we found the first few weeks was actually we had to make it easier <laughs> because this is something that's different. You know, this is about reaction timing. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's about it's about absolutely getting that hit. You know, we know it's been shot, or you know, it's not been shot. Yeah. So we actually found that they had to get accustomed to how it works. It yes. is something different. It absolutely. Is something yeah. Something unique. You know, and fun. So yeah, very very positive. We're looking forward to kind of seeing what the community is going to do with them, where we can take it. We're taking feedback already from people that bought them. Yeah. Um, we're wrapping new round types in there, new scoring mechanisms. Uh, we're also speaking to the practical shooting guys. Um, they're also very interested in yeah, it absolutely. because of the, the timing yeah, yeah. of it. And we'll be building more kind of homologated competition frameworks into the app. So, you know, there's less tweaking on the difficulty levels and it all being kind of very, very locked down in terms of how the scoring works. So yeah. that, you know, you've got an apples for apples competitive framework. Yeah. So for anyone who's interested in learning more and getting get involved. Yep. We're at attacksense.com. Attacksense.com. So uh, loads of FAQs there. There's some videos of some by Girl yeah. Yeah. So that we've taken from different skirmish sites. Um, if you're interested, there's a contact form. If you want to know more, we we'll always love to hear feedback from people. Awesome. So, yeah. I will put a link to that in the description below. Neil, thank you so much. And thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. Yeah, Great. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Cheers. Cheers. I'll see you in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that about wraps it up. We can see behind us. Yeah, it's, it's emptying out quite a lot now. So yep. uh, I think now is a good time for us to disappear to that camera for some reason. That's it. That's go, go stand in front of that camera. <laughs> I'll stand over there it. you go. There um, he's back again. It's worth saying. That, I mean, to be honest, there's still a few people we were trying to get in. I mean, this day has been rampant. I yeah, it has so. been incredibly busy. I mean, you saw how long it took us just to get the first guest on. <laughs> you know, how many people he had around his stand. Exactly. Guys, let us know what you think of the stream, wherever you're watching it, however long you've watched it for. Would you like to see stuff like this in future? Is there anything in particular you liked or disliked on the stream? Leave comments below, whether you're watching this live or in the replay. Uh, I want to thank all our guests. Yeah, absolutely. It's been really interesting, some of the gear they've brought on and shown us. Some things that uh, I'd never seen before, certainly, and uh, I'd like to see more of again. Yeah. And if you haven't already considered going to the Midland Air Soft Fair, whether you're just around the corner or a few hours away, I'd say I'd highly suggest coming up. I mean, I think Definitely. it's been a fun day. You can see how busy it's been and what's been going on. Bargains to be had, new products to be seen. Yeah. And uh, I think we've got a, a good future ahead of us on these events. Yeah, but just remember, these things are only possible with the support of you guys. So just come along to things like this and see see the new products, see the uh, see the camaraderie, the, uh, the community, if you like, of the place. And I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. That's it. I mean, that's us done. Thank you so is. much, you guys. Thank you to the amazing team yeah. there <laughs> behind, behind the behind cameras, the computers, yeah. even if they do want to make me a uh, big screen <laughs> at the very end. Excellent. Guys, there we go. Right. See you guys next time. See you again.